morning has broke <laughs> like the first morning. <laughs> I am still sexy. Thank God for me. Ah, the morning, the morning. How glad I am that I've always spurned regular lovers. Because, of course, by sleeping alone, I get me all to myself. And I always know I'm going to wake up with the most attractive person in the world. <laughs> Morning, Eddie. What are you doing in my bed? Well, I was sleeping, but now I'm talking to a kid. Oh, ha, 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 ha. What's wrong with your bed? It's covered in lager. You mean you threw up on it? There was a certain amount of unpleasantness, yes. And actually, what you're so upset about, I've been very considerate. I could have easily thrown up on your bed and slept in my own. And what is wrong with the lavatory? Richard. You know, I hate sleeping in the lavatory. I can't get comfy. Well, if you ever sleep in my bed again, ever, I'm going to hire a hitman to kill you. Richard, just give me the money and I'll drink myself to death. <laughs> oh, don't talk to me about alcohol. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I was out with my showbiz chums last night. <laughs> and I was out and I had four sweet sherries. <laughs> Which is way over my limit, because you know me, I just get silly. And now I've got a head like a... Uh, uh, I've got a head like a... Uh, well, it's like a head, really. <laughs> you paint a very vivid picture, Richie. I know exactly what you mean. Uh, thanks, Eddie. Right. I suppose I ought to do my exercises. Right, that's enough. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Well... I'm not worried about my health. I saw a doctor the other day, he said I look fantastic. Great, a blind doctor, very inspiring, I must say. What were you doing there anyway, having a lobotomy? No, I have a rather unpleasant rash in my trousers. Oh. <laughs> but I slept with you last night. In which case, I suggest you seek immediate medical advice. I can't do that, it'll be all over the papers. Better than all over your bottom. <laughs> Maybe I haven't got it. <laughs> Even germs have standards. <laughs> I'm sorry, but did I just detect an effort at humour? Brilliantly disguised as offensive mindless dribble, certainly. But an effort nonetheless. Well done, Eddie. Now look, you better have a quick peek in my pants and see if my bot's got back there. <laughs> All right, me old china plate, I'll have a butcher's, but I don't promise to keep me breakfast down. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, see, see anything unpleasant? Now, that is a stupid question. <laughs> Rash-wise. Hang on a minute. <laughs> no, no, nothing could survive on that. Oh, God! <laughs> All I asked for was a quick month over and I get an erotic cabaret! Now, do it properly. <laughs> Come on, up there! Morning, Mr. Rich. Uh, morning, Milky. Look, <laughs> uh, no, Milky, uh, this is not what it seems. It's really none of my business, honestly, sir. This is, I know it's none of your business, Milky. I was just explaining what we were doing. I know it looked sexy, but uh, what we were actually doing was, uh, Eddie? Yeah, we... No, no, no! But actually, you're right, it is none of your business, you, you dirty-minded little pervert! Just who the hell do you think you are? Barging in here, making revolting, libelous insinuations. You're a reporter, aren't you? <laughs> Eddie, it's the scum. Get the disinfectant. <laughs> I can't believe it, a journalist in my house. I'll have to have the whole place fumigated. And then seal it in concrete and dump it in the North Sea. Journalists have a half-life of a thousand years. <laughs> Get this, Nina Miska! <laughs> I'm not a journalist, I'm a milkman. Hey, he's right, you know, Richie. He can't be a journalist. He hasn't got a stiffy. <laughs> Believe me, Milky, I'm going to fight this. I've got the whole of the light entertainment department of the BBC behind me. I shall call Keith Harris an orville as character witnesses. Well, I hope you like prison food. The jury will melt as Orville takes the stand. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> Witchy, witchy, innocent. Richie. 
Orville is a nylon green day glow duck <laughs> in a nappy. The jury will hang you. Edward, there may be children watching. Excuse me. What are you going to tell them next? There's no Father Christmas? Yes, I am. No. Hello, kiddies. <laughs> there is no Father Christmas. It's purely a marketing ploy to make no income parents' lives a misery. I want you to imagine something. <laughs> I want you to picture something, Edward. I want you to picture the simple, trusting face of a child streaked with the cruel tears of disillusion because of what you just said. I'd like you to picture the tear-streaked face of its mother because one week's doll won't cover the cost of one master of the universe battle cruiser. <laughs> well, she can get a job, can't she? Become a, a stripper or something? <laughs> now you're sitting there crying about it. Get on your bike and get your clothes off, right, Mr. Tibbet? <laughs> I'll be off then, shall I? You stay where you are, Quizzling. <laughs> You're carrying secrets that could put back the British game show 50 years. Right, I'll see you tomorrow, then. I okay. said, wait here. <laughs> Please, Mr. Ah, oh, a bit of a different time now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Forget the blackmail, now it's please, Mr. Rich. Well, it's too late, darling. You're dead. <laughs> D-A-E-D. What are we going to do? Well, it's not too bad. The milk will soak in and we can pick up the bits of grass sometime. No, 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 no. What are we going to do about the corpse? Oh, uh, bang it in the cupboard and blame someone else. That's brilliant. <laughs> of course, the perfect alibi. Let's grab the stiff. Oh, uh. Oh, for heaven's sake, Eddie. A man is lying dead and still you're spouting your appalling double entendres. You don't think perhaps as this poor milkman's immortal soul lies hovering above the remains of its earthly self, it would prefer not to be the butt of a knob gag? I think perhaps, all in all, he might prefer not to be dead at all. But then, of course, he didn't have a choice, did he? Because certain people boxed him over the head with a couple of milk bottles. Now, shut up! Let's get the body in a cup before it begins to whiff. Right. Uh, 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 um, if that were our criteria for putting things in the cub, we would have put you in one ages ago, wouldn't we? <laughs> because you're so whiffy. Yeah, I got it. I just didn't think it was funny. <laughs> At all. Liar, you didn't get it because you're too thick. I'm not thick. Yes, you are. I am. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> Put your head here. All right, then. <laughs> He's right, you know. I'm pretty stupid. Right, now let's get the body in the cupboard. <laughs> Oh, come on, Milky. Yeah, Ooh, sexy, sexy Milky. <laughs> right. Ah, ah. Well, now, much as I respect Her Majesty's Metropolitan Police Force, I hardly think they're going to find the body in the cupboard. <laughs> we're home and free. <laughs> Bloody hell, we're onto us already. <laughs> Pack the bags, get the Brazilian currency. <laughs> what? Maybe it's not the police. Maybe we've, uh... Won the pools! Yes, maybe that's it. Yes, it could happen. Millions of pounds, publicity, a dream come true. Wait! What? We don't do the pools. Damn! <laughs> that's got a count against us. Brazil! Wait! What? Maybe they made a mistake. I'll find out. Yes. Wait! What? Maybe it's a producer with a wonderful part. Ooh, ugh. Eddie, I said wonderful part, not attractive Willie. The connection between the trouser area and the word part is tenuous, to say the least. Now listen. You keep your hands off that phone. If it's important, you roll for me. I don't want it spoiled by your rebuilding telephone man. <coughs> Hello? You have just dialed telephone sex gardening division. First run the turn it like that. <laughs> it is Filthy Ralph, the impresario, promoter, pornographer, and common thief. I know who Filthy Ralph is. Yeah, but they don't, do they? <laughs> Stop talking to the children. <coughs> Hello, Filthy Ralph. What do you want? Got me any work? Listen. I'm jaded with the tired, shallow world of TV light entertainment. I yearn to tread the boards again. I fancy Shakespeare. It's considering he's a bloke and dead makes you a homosexual <laughs> necrophilia. Eddie, Eddie. Yes? Could you pass the pencil? Hang on, filthy. <clears throat> Thanks. <clears throat> <laughs> now then, filthy, what was that you were saying about getting me a wonderful Shakespearean role? Romeo and Juliet, perhaps. Uh, oh, you're coming over. Wonderful. <laughs> Terrific! I knew today was going to be important. Romeo and Juliet! Where's my big beloved Shakespeare book? I know exactly where it is. <laughs> Here we are. Lucky we've only got through the pastorals. What? <laughs> Romeo 
Friends and Jewels. Ah, here we are. Friends and Jewels. Now, Eddie, listen, concentrate. I play Romeo, and you play the fiery, warlike Tybilt. Right, so, it's a fight. Here it goes. Obviously, it'll be better when I've got my tights on. <clears throat> Away to heaven, respected lenity, and fire-eyed fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybilt. <laughs> What in the name of Satan's portion? I was acting. You said it was a fight. Yeah, but you don't let me finish my speech. <laughs> Seems a very funny sort of fight to me. You can't hit me till I finish my speech. Which shows how much you know about acting, because it happens all the time in shape. Well, how am I supposed to play a role that's riddled with such glaring inconsistencies? On the one hand, I'm a fiery warlike tibble. And on the other hand, I stand there quiet, Tibbs, when I do my poem. Eddie, this is Shakespeare. And everybody knows that Shakespeare is crap. Yes. <laughs> no, no, well, yes, yes, he is, yes, yes. What is the difficulty to think about Shakespeare, you see, Edwin? Shakespeare, being a genius, is allowed slightly more license than us lesser mortals. And hence is allowed... <laughs> <laughs> and hence is allowed to... Oh, oh no, it's probably the front door. It'll be the car to take me to rehearsals. Answer it, would you please, Eddie Poppet? <coughs> Red Shake! Yes. I hate being called Eddie Poppet. Oh, sorry. Answer the door, please, Eddie Weddy, Whoppity Foo Foo, Billy Billy Block. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Get a bag and a drink for a dying man, would you, Eddie? <coughs> Hello, filthy Ralph. Ralph Filthy. For the last time, my name is Ralph Filthy, not Filthy Ralph. <laughs> Honestly, just because I run a chain of discount brothels, everyone seems to think I'm a dirty old man. Yeah, well, you've got to admit, there is a certain haphazard logic to that conclusion. Eddie, my leisure establishments are totally allowable. And anyway, I'll get the kids off youth training schemes. <laughs> the iron lady looks after small businessmen like me. Duffy! <laughs> Richie! Duffy! Richie! Richie! Filthy! Richie! Now, Richie, I've never deceived you before, have I? Well, no, that's not entirely true, is it, Ralph? <laughs> when? When? When have I ever deceived you? When? When you kept back all my cash. Now, that's not deception. That's theft, Richard. <laughs> well, well, you promised me you could get me a snogging sesh with Princess Di. All right, all right. Once. I've deceived you once. No, twice. You told me you managed Laurence Olivier. So I do. Laurence Olivier, the one-armed turd impressionist. <laughs> there was an implication you met Larry the actor. Well, that's the same difference. All right, then, daughter. I have lied to you through my teeth throughout our professional association. <laughs> well, I don't call coming round and scrounging drinks occasionally a professional association. Eddie, I've had a long day and I've only been up half an hour. I'm never any good before my second pack of snouts, you know that. Now, please, just let me spit it out. Oh, uh. <laughs> Eddie, please. This is my agent. Richie. Yes? You are in trouble. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> Trab. Big Trab. How big? Bigger than the biggest laugh Tarby ever got. <laughs> one about the sheep he did at the Falklands War gala evening where everyone thought the cheeky chap had gone just a bit too far. <laughs> Including that one. My God, that's absolutely colossal! I'm telling you, if you were to take all the best bits of the world's true greats yes. and construct out of them the world's best comedian, Bernard Manning's trousers, <laughs> Paul Daniels' catchphrase, Ken Dodd's haircut, Sid Little's timing, Eddie Larger's, sir. Eddie Large impression. Jimmy Cricket's funny Wellington. That's right, that's right. If you were to take all those wonderful, wonderful elements and then give that comic the world's best gag. Which would have to be Thatcher's 79 election promise to cut unemployment. <laughs> and believe me, Luby, the laugh you would get would still not be as big as the Trump. You are. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, <laughs> well.
or what? What is the trap? My boy Richie is in. Oh, he's had a paternity suit filed against him. <laughs> a 17-year-old girl is pregnant and says you're the father. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty Richie. <laughs> We're talking about 20 years of having to spend all your money on a bastard. <laughs> yeah, but never mind about Eddie. What about his baby? <laughs> I'm talking about the baby. Now, Richie, tell me straight. This is Ralph here, your oldest acquaintance. Did you get laid nine months ago, and more specifically, to a rather young popsy who claimed to be a fan? Well, that should have made you suspicious for a start. <laughs> because, because if you did, it's going to cost us Trey Mucho Missoula. <laughs> now, you didn't do it, did you? And why not? Let me tell you, filthy Ralph, I've sustained some quite considerable Belisha Beacons in my time, thank you. <laughs> yes, Richie, if you just put your disgusting libido back in your underwear for a second, then. <laughs> if it's yours, you pay. Ah. Now, is it yours? No. <laughs> I've never done it in my life. So, at last, the truth is out. Richie Rich has never done it in his life. No, no, obviously, I have done it once. It's, no, no, lots, lots. <laughs> I mean, I am very, very sexy. I can't remember. I probably had it off with everybody in the whole world by now. Right. Well, in that case, you can't take the blood test. They've already ordered it. And even if there's a chance that you'll fail, we cannot risk it. We're talking about money. But well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> oh! Uh... <laughs> and that, probably the door. Oh. Might be the stalk with Richie's little baby. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! I haven't got a baby, and I need all my cash for me. Richie, it's a friend of yours. A big white bird with a bundle in its beak. <laughs> it's a stork! It's a bloody stork! <laughs> right, well, I'm gonna settle this once and for all. Richie, Richie, they're a protected species. Give me that! Four points of yogurt and a strawberry gold top, Mr. Rich. <laughs> the most milkman-shaped stalk I've seen in my life. <laughs> I would go further and pause it, but it's not a stalk at all, but a milkman. Yes, it is. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> Edward, a man is dead! Well, I didn't think it'd be stupid enough to believe me. As everyone knows, the baby stalk doesn't exist! Edward, well, please, can you stop ruining childhoods? Innocence is lost all too quickly in this modern world. You can talk. Your agent runs a brothel. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, please. Stage school. Stage school. They're wonderful kids and I think the world of them, but never mind all that. Never mind all that. Richie, you have just killed a milkman. <laughs> Two milkman, filthy. <laughs> oh, my God, how depressing. This could be very bad publicity for us. Very bad indeed. What? You think the papers will side with Milky? <laughs> Bound to. I remember when I had Mike Reed on my books. Him and Chedwin got drunk one night and set fire to a nun. <laughs> Next series of Saturday Superstore was slated. Yeah, filthy, a nun, all right. There's only a couple of milkmen. I mean, clanky, clanky, whistly, whistly, morning, madam, aren't I sexy and other fruit, young of your culture? Knock all out, they sent you a bill. They deserve to die. Uh, one milkman, maybe you could laugh it off. Friendly joke. Went too far. Faults on both sides, but two. It looks very Freddy Star, doesn't it? <laughs> this is just the sort of thing those vipers in the press pick up on. The crits will slaughter my next show. Yeah, I can just see it now. Daily Telegraph. Bloody great news! Richie Rich goes to Priz forever and ever! Hooray! <laughs> I'm not going to Priz! I'm not going to Priz! I claim diminished responsibility! Premenstrual tension! <laughs> That's filthy! Give me a sex change! Please stop shouting, Richie. Nobody knows about it yet. And when the going gets tough, the tough have a fag and a drink and a ponder. <laughs> Hello, get me body loser Gary, please. <laughs> yes, I can hold. I said have a fag and a drink and a ponder. Yeah, a fag and a drink and a ponder. <clears throat> Hello, filthy Ralph here. Yeah, body loser Gary. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah, I want you to lose a body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, he doesn't feel like losing a body today. <laughs> we'll have to do it ourselves. The question is how. Yes, the question is how. 
I've got an idea. Yeah, well, we can ignore that, can't we? <laughs> what I was going to say was let's have a farting competition. <laughs> well, Ralph, what do you think? If I farted, you'd soon know about it. <laughs> now, listen, we're going to have to cover for them on their app. Richie, get this bloke's clothes off. You're going to have to do his job so the dairy don't work out he's dead. Hang on a minute. That's a bit of a drastic solution, isn't it? I mean, all right, I've killed a couple of guys, but what you're suggesting is manual labour. Oh, listen to the tragedy, Queen. Do you want to do hard labour for life? Well, obviously not, but how long am I expected to keep it up for? Living a double life as a milkman. Am I expected to train these whippets? <laughs> Learn to clog dance? <laughs> Sleep with his wife? I'm bound to be discovered. There she is, in her curlers, lying there thinking, oh, God. I'm so bored of having to sex that working-class oik I married. <laughs> and all of a sudden, whoops-a-daisy, Richie Rich flashes a star-spangled smile and something not dissimilar to a nuclear submarine floats in between the sheets. <laughs> yeah. And then, when she's flopped your beer belly back onto the floor, <laughs> she can get out her binoculars and start searching for your action. <laughs> Why can't Eddie the Git do it? You seem to be forgetting, Richie. We have two little problemettes here, and we need Eddie for the other one. That paternity stuff, and uh, you can't take that blood test in case it's positive. And, uh, what's that got to do with me, Ralph? Hello, get me two girls round at Richie's place fast. Great! A party! Fantastic! <laughs> Let's forget all our problems and party! <laughs> Makeup girls. Oh. We're going to make Eddie look like Richie so that he can take the blood test instead and that way we'll be sure the blood won't match the babies. Richie put on Milky's trousers, Eddie put on Richie's trousers. And who's going to wear my trousers? I should imagine someone criminally insane. <laughs> Who enjoys whipping to high heaven and scaring old ladies? <laughs> <laughs> now, like all great actors, I must think myself into the role. Um... <laughs> I'll give him a limp. No, that definitely says milkman to me. And a hunchback, of course. Yes, all those milk crates must take their toll. Right, here goes. <laughs> <laughs> Superb. Richie Rich moved as if he was born a milkman. Dribbled Bernard Levin in der Sturmer. Right. What sort of accent should he have? Hmm? Cockney, of course. Luckily, I'm a master of dialect. Here goes. <laughs> and there you have it. The milkman. A creation to rank with uh, Olivier's Othello, Gilgood's Hamlet, and Forsyth's brilliantly observed supermarket manager. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away. Well, perhaps you wouldn't mind just scattering it around the street then. I mean, after all, that's what you normally do, isn't it? Oh, yeah, very clever, I must say. Do you have any idea how difficult efficient waste disposal is? <sighs> Bloody! That is how difficult. What with privatisation. Oh, for pity's sake! People seem to use these plots as a forum for whatever personal hobby horse they feel like waffling on about! <laughs> and shut up and trash this bother, or I'll tell on you to thatch. No way, I am not taking it, and that is final. It is not in a bin liner. <laughs> One day, rubbish collection is going to be carried out entirely by microchip, and you're starved to death, and I'm glad! <sighs> Richie Rich. Wonderful characterisation, love. Very, very fetching indeed. Now, have you put Milk O'Dearies off the scent? Uh, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> no pub, no pigs, no horse! I don't know what kind of tarby brain half wit would want an order for failed old fat bottomed excellent drag queen with zero talent like me. In fact, I think I'm a complete brat. They're <laughs> breathing. I won't even ask how you came by these two, Richie. Well, we certainly shan't forget today in a hurry. But you think you won't? First day in your life, you look halfway presentable, dick face. 
Actually, however many milkmen you kill, it's still not going to become fashionable, you know. <laughs> Look, all you've got to do is get rid of four dead milkmen. It'll be no problem. No problem. May I casually remind you, Richie, that I am stood here dressed like a completely poncy git. <laughs> now, can we please get to the hospital and trash this maternity suit before I get mistaken for a poodle? And try not to <laughs> kill any more milkmen on the way. Right, right. Look, men, milkmen. He shall pay for what he's done to my daughter. The Gigolo, the Casanova, the Don Juan, the Lothario. The randy little bastard. <laughs> oh, Mum. Believe me, Mrs. Whitehouse, if the blood from the baby and the blood from Mr. Rich prove compatible, your daughter will be entitled to an enormous settlement. He's nothing but a vile seducer, I tell you. A vile seducer. Oh, it wasn't that bad. About worse, certainly. <laughs> Tell you, lucky we got the drip in, or he'd have delivered his last pint of milk, and that's the truth. Hello, hospital! <laughs> <laughs> there must be some medical alcohol in one of these somewhere. <laughs> Richie, 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 Richie. Richie. Oh, pull your hat down over your eyes. Here, wear these dark glasses. Right, come on. <laughs> Now, listen, everybody's got to think that Eddie is you, so don't go around doing anything to give away who you really are. OK, I understand. Right. Let's go. No pictures, no magic, no autographs. Please respect my privacy. I'm really just an ordinary member of the public. Oh, sorry, of course I've had it. Right, then, who is Mr Rich? I am. Sorry, he is. There he is. That's the one. Pay up, you philanthropists are just for you. Pay up. No, no, please calm yourself. Now then, Cindy, is this the man you claim to be the father of your child? Yeah, I think so. Is that her, Filthy? Is that the girl that I'm supposed to have... Yes, yes. If she was 20 years younger, she might be quite attractive. But she's lovely, Filthy. Lovely. The sort of girl you want to really, really cherish. I have never seen this girl before in my life. You lying scoundrel! <laughs> oh, don't cry, little one. You can't help me. He's ruined me. Oh, don't worry. It'll be all right. Little lumpkin, snuggly, waggly, nosy <laughs> Doctor, I think you'd better get me a bucket. I'm going to be horrendously sick. because of him. Hang your head in shame, Eddie, you cad, for what you've done to this poor girl. Why, I have got a good mind to punch you right in the face. He's not making playing this part very easy, you know. <laughs> Listen, daughter, shut your eek. It's you that did it, not <gasps> Eddie. We're trying to get you out of this. <laughs> so, so could we get on, please? All right, bitch, hold your horses. All right, the NHS paying you enough out of my wages. <laughs> Miss Filthy, when I agreed to this cruel deception, I never dreamt the girl would be so unutterably lovely. Look at that. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> mm, yummy, yummy, with lovely little baby. Mm. <laughs> I think he likes me. It's a girl and leave her alone. Do you think he looks like me? I think he does a bit. Obviously not quite as handsome. No, can we get on? Oh, shut up, you old cow. <laughs> Fancy hair for a mummy law powdered glass in the cocoa job, if you ask me. <laughs> Doctor, I'm sorry about this demented milkman we brought with us. Let's just, just get on with a blood test, would you? And uh, while you're out, could you get us 50 high tar ciggies? <laughs> we have a sample. The baby's blood, it just remains to get yours. If you'd step this way, please. Okay, Doctor, but go easy. I don't mind the sight of blood as long as it isn't mine. You should have thought of that before you ruined my daughter. Are you going to breastfeed it? Not at the moment, no. I think you should. <laughs> Go on, pop one out. <laughs> Please. Oh, just shut up, will you? This is a very emotional time for me. If only you knew, my pretty young maid. If only you knew. Perhaps today will turn out a happier day than even you expect. Oh, he'll be happy enough when that slimy rat in there pays up the maintenance. Well, no doubt about it. The tests prove positive. This gentleman's blood is from the same family as that of the babies. <laughs> Although somewhat diluted. <laughs> That's my blood. Neat lager. If you're quite finished, Doctor, thank you. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. You filthy quack. Are you saying this man's blood is positive? I knew it, I knew it. I am the father. Well, what, is, what is this man talking about? Never mind him, he's mad. Will we be able to sue for maintenance? Certainly, if you excuse me, I'll get the relevant test certificate. Wait! Stay your hand, Doctor. The time has come for the truth. Now, Richard, quick, get off. The baby's father is not this sad imposter whose blood happens to coincide, but none other than I. Richie Rich! Oh? Richie Rich, PBS, Lynx, 1972. <laughs> Maintenance, forget it. I'm going to look after my baby. And you, Cindy, I'm going to give you a home and make you an honest woman. 
I love you and our baby, and I can't wait to start work on another one. <laughs> oh, darling, aren't you happy for us? This is so dramatic. Somebody should make a film of me now. This isn't what you said would happen, Eddie. Ah, I must say, I'm surprised myself. Right, let's set your plans off. No money's worth being associated with an idiot like him. It would have been bad enough people thinking I'd slept with him, but live with him? No way. I'm sorry, Cousin Eddie. You lose your half of the maintenance, but you do understand. Yeah, I certainly do. I live with the bastard already. <laughs> well, bye-bye, Cousin Cindy. Bye-bye, Auntie Myrtle. Bye-bye, <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> please, please, will somebody just explain to me exactly what is going on here? Oh, bloody hell, Richie, you think it was a plot? That was my cousin. Her and her boyfriend needed some cash for the kids, so we worked out if I took the blood test, being a relation, it would prove positive. We could all have some of your cash. <laughs> but it was Filthy's idea. Yes, yes, I was in for a cut as well. We all were. If you hadn't got so sentimental, it would have worked perfectly. My own agent and my best bloody friend and minder tried to defraud me for my cash. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's it, you're sacked. That's right, Sir Aku Ed. <laughs> You too, Ozzy, bloody metal! Richie, darling, you can't sack us. You need us. You need us to sort out that other little problem. What other little problem? Drink a pint of milk a day. <laughs> Sweeney, I think he means go away. That's right. You're very lucky boys, because we've got important police business to do here. So I'll be. <laughs> All right, Dixon, let's start chucking him in. Keep an eye open for lefties. All right. <laughs> Secretary of Finance more cell space, this sort of thing wouldn't be necessary. <laughs> Too quiet, we the fun of that. <laughs> all right, cheap knock at the police, but you try getting out of a stupid plot like this. They are all <laughs> bastards anyway. Yeah. Look, I've had just about enough left-wing soapbox rhetoric for one week. If you don't like the police, next time you get beaten up, try calling an alternative comedian. <laughs> Squeaky, I've told you before, 
balloon bending is no longer a saleable commodity. <laughs> the public wants sex. Squeaky, two round balloons and one long thin one does not constitute <laughs> sex. Now, Squeaky, do yourself a favour. Cut your losses, kill yourself. Sorry, Mr Filthy, but I've got to get me bits of whatnot. Give and take, daughter. That's what sharing an office is all about. Mr Filthy, about my etchings. Look, now, you did say look, that... daughter, I am a dying man. I may not live through this fag. I am not an art dealer, and if I was, the art in which I dealt would not be the gumption-covered eyesores you produce in your tea break. <laughs> now, that young lass of yours, that Cindy, now, she is a work of art. If she ever fancied any uh, lunchtime peeling, I could get her a fiver of flesh. Oh, am I a dead body, Mr Filthy? Yeah, you're right there. That could be a super little act. <laughs> yeah, Trey Kinko. Oh. Get that for me, would you, dearie? My quack has told me to take it easy. <laughs> Hello, Ralph Filthy, media coordinator. Get your mop out of my pending <laughs> file, you silly old tart. <laughs> Hello, yes. Yes, now, who did you want to speak to? Yeah, Richie Rich. No, uh, you've got a job for him. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, um, yes. Um, celebrity slaughterhouse closing. Yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice. Now, look, I, I can't do it for any less than 20 quid. All right, 10, done. Um, yeah, when do you want him? When do you want him? Uh, now, would you believe it? Today is the only day of the decade that he is actually working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it sounds impossible, but yeah, he's at the BBC on ooh -er. Sounds a bit rude. <laughs> All right, my lovely, it's on air in two minutes, so if you could cut the chatter just for the camera line up, thank you. Oh, yes, of course, I have known Tarby for years, yes. We've often performed in the same pants. <laughs> Banto love, pantomimes. Ooh, we've done a few. Oh, cinders, aladders, dickers, witters, fast riff. My dick was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old showbiz joke, love. Julian, we're two minutes to air. Who the hell's the ugly bastard doing all the jabbering? <laughs> Name's Richie Rich. Hello. Last minute replacement Tommy? celebrity. He'd probably say yes. Bernie Winters yes, got a Bob Rowell you know, commercial in this. <laughs> well, Julian, you tell it. If he doesn't button his scabby lip, I'll get makeup to cast straight the bastard with a pair of eyebrow tweezers. He's only got a teeny... Tony weeny bit less talking, Trevor says. Uh, I bet Trevor put it a bit stronger than that, didn't he? Hey, Trevor, love? Hello, Trevor. All right. Hello. Come on, let's make movies, you old twig. <laughs> <laughs> Sit on him, sack him, sack his people, bankrupt his company. All right, we're rolling, so take it from the chair. Batman, start at the beginning, everybody. All right, start at the beginning. Oh, how I love the business. Shut him up! <laughs> All right, everybody, we're going to have lots of fun, so don't forget your laugh and applause cues, and here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday, 6.30, and time for Ooh, Sounds a Bit Rude, the game for all the family. And here's your host, everyone's favourite mirth maker, Ivor Whopper. Thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me the clap. <laughs> And welcome one and uh, welcome all to another edition of Ooh, uh, Sounds a Bit Rude, <laughs> the game for all the family. And as always, we have our usual motley collection of the dregs of society. <laughs> Plus, of course, the only sane one amongst us, our member of the great British public. Close up on the pleb. I said close up on the pleb, not right up her nose, for God's sake. Thanks, camera five. Good luck at the job centre, my darling. <laughs> uh, so now you are Mrs. Ruth Butcher. Close up, Ivor, for the big gag. Well, let's hope you get some really meaty questions then. Brilliant. Hit laughter, darling. <laughs> right, follow it across to the house, please, my darling. Love it. Why on the slab? <laughs> Great gag, Ivor! Meaty! Brilliant! Actually, I know quite a good gag. There were these two crocodiles. Well, mums, really. Julian, tell that imbecile to stick to the script! I can't get to him, he's in shot. 
close up on Ivor! Now, the rules of the game, like the members of the panel, are very, very simple indeed. <laughs> sentence which sounds a bit rude and then my good friends here have to laugh dirtily but then have to come up with a clean version for example i never impress the girls because i've only got a tiny Ooh, penis <laughs> <laughs> and of course the answer is car <laughs> right. Let's let's meet my good friends here these bunch of down and outs we're going to try and help ruth win Good luck to her. <laughs> good luck to her. Good gang, Ivor. Good luck to you, mate. Julian! <laughs> Shut that gormless git up! No unscripted spontaneity! And now then, now then, who <laughs> have we here? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Billy Glitter and Huggles the Ostrich. Close up, Billy and Huggles, my darlings. Cue music. And Billy and Huggles laugh away. I'm so sorry. My girlfriend's left me. Oh, what happened? She's given me the bird. <laughs> oh, I shot an audience laughing, my darling. And I bet it's not the first time you've been stuck in a bird's gob, eh, Ivor? <laughs> what fuck is he saying? That's not in the script! Cut back to Ivor! Oh, my God, he's completely lost! Cooey, <laughs> 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 hello. Oh, Molly, nice to see you again. <laughs> Ooh, well, I bet that Bill's ostrich and just well behaved as my pussy. Come on, Ivor, bring this show now, for God's sake! Ladies and gentlemen, everybody's favourite mother-in-law, Molly Slocum. Ooh, you're so lovely. I'd like to show you all my pussy. <laughs> In fact, I can't think of anything nicer than having you all stroking my pussy. <laughs> Oh, for God's sake, love, don't milk it. That's the third time you've done that gag. And he used to do it in every ep of that appalling sitcom you used to do. What's going on down there? Now then, here we have a gay young fellow. <laughs> John, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling a little queer. <laughs> oh, my favourite gag, my darling. My favourite gag. Thank heaven for a couple of professionals, right? We'll be right round yet, darling. Ooh, nice gag, John. I should be sure and keep my bottom firmly on the seat when I'm anywhere near you. <laughs> cut away! Cut away! What is he saying? Hello. Don't you dare tread on one of my laughs ever again! I'll shut your face, little puff. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch we have in here tonight. <laughs> now, uh, Cindy, lovely to see both of you here this evening. Well, I always like to keep abreast of what you're up to, I'd <laughs> Good, good. We're back on script, my darlings. Yes, folks. <laughs> I've got a whopping great talent. My name's Richie Rich, and I'm available panto or summer season anytime during the rest of my life. <laughs> hey, two blunts going into a brothel and all. <laughs> Sure, isn't it hilarious? <laughs> when I say me pussy, I really need it. Get the back! Eddie! Hello, barman. Give me a drink. <laughs> well, Eddie, what do you think about my show? It was stupendously bad. Thank you. Julian, you look like you've seen a ghost. Double scotch for this man. How do you think the show went? I thought it was wonderful. I just lost me job. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, old man. I'll try and have a word with someone up top. But anyway, what did you think about my performance? I thought it was rather special. Be honest. What a... <laughs> Bastard! <laughs> Look, if anyone else wants to throw their drinker out with him, I'm throwing it at me! Why, <laughs> <laughs> <Not> you lot! <laughs> <laughs> Massive drinks for this table, barman. Cool, well, you're a lot of long faces, aren't you? I thought it went wonderfully. Mind if I join you? <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, but seriously, gagging aside, it was a super show, I thought. There you are, Richie. Here we are, drinks all round. Oh. 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 I mean, this is a showbiz initiation ceremony. I'm now an official Sunshine Variety golfing rat. Fifteen pound forty, please. Certainly, Barnum. Fifteen pounds forty. Uh, disgusting, an entire tray of good pot wasted. It's no wonder the BBC costs so much. I'm just blood alone by my license. <laughs> uh, I'm just off to see if I can get a snob with Val Singleton. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't actually give me a dressing room, those BBC bastards. I had to put on my Fabo jacket in the labs. 
<laughs> oh, God, I'm disgraced. I can't pay for my round. I'll never be able to hold my head. <sighs> <sighs> no, no, get me behind me, Satan. No, I mustn't. I can't. I... Oh, my God. I have. <sighs> <sighs> for Nolan, sisters. My all-time favourite four-tissue fantasy. They wouldn't mind. They probably fancy me even more than I fancy them. Actually, that's true, they probably do. <laughs> I'm in the mood for dancing, <laughs> romancing, and giving it all tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're in the mood for Richie, who's not titchy, but particularly well endowed. <laughs> oh. For Nolan's shower. <sighs> Wait till I tell them about this at the fan club general meeting. Oh, do you think I'm sexy? Yes, we think you're sexy. Sexy, 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 sexy. Hey, you. What do you think you're doing? Oh, hi, girls. You took your time. Strip off and come on in. The water's lovely and so am I. Oh. Uh, oh, good. Um... The shower's fixed now. Uh, any more problems, just call transvestite plumbers and we'll be round in a flat machine. Who the hell are you? Look, he's ruined one of our costumes. Let's call the police. No, 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 don't do that, don't do that. No, it was, it was, it was just a prank. Uh, you know us, us immense celebrities. <laughs> Jolly senses of humour. Immense celebrity. If you're such a big celebrity, you must be pretty rich. Uh, yep, rich and sexy. Snap away, girls. I can never resist a camera. Well, if you're so rich and you want this film back, you better come up with a thousand quid by the end of the week or your career is over. Right, girls? Right. right. <laughs> Otherwise, we sell the pick to the papes and shop you to the police for nicking our gear. <gasps> now get lost while we do our song. Yeah. <laughs> Ready, girls? And two, three, four. Hang on, hang on. You're not going to sing, are you? <laughs> we are. Why else do you think we agreed to be in this load of old crap? <sighs> and Nolan's sister talking dirty to me. Wait till I tell this to the chaps. <laughs> Get off the set while we do our song. But we don't want you to do the song. We only had you on the programme because you used to wear those tight disco pants and you don't even wear them anymore. <laughs> anyway, there's no time now. You're blackmailing me. I've got to get on with the plot. Thank God someone's still being professional around here. <laughs> yeah, uh, Valerie Singleton doesn't half go. <laughs> Well, she can run a lot faster than me, anyway. <laughs> right. Now I need a drink. <laughs> ah. Right. What shall I have for my supper tonight? Bugger all? Oh, sweet F.A. <laughs> no matter about both. The final humiliation! <laughs> Lower than this, I cannot sink. Lest fate pull out its finger pretty sharpish, Eddie, your old mate will be climbing the stairway to heaven before eventide. Who's that, then? What? Who's this old friend of mine? Oh, ha, 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 ha. You'll be the death of me. Well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> I'm in terrible trub. Deep, humiliating trub. Trub? <laughs> I'm being blackmailed by the Nolan sisters. Blimey! That is embarrassing. Yeah. If it gets into the pipes that you're being stitched up by the Knowles, you'll be a laughing stuff. <laughs> Still, look at the bright side. Which is? It'll be the first laughs you've ever got. <laughs> I do a lot of smile humour, Eddie. People aren't supposed to laugh. Yeah, but they're not supposed to throw heavy objects and chant, get off, you boring bastard, we've heard better jokes on the speaking clock. <laughs> That's risks on stage, Edward. I create! I, I improvise! There may occasionally be some slight unpleasantness. Yes, I think it's called your act. <laughs> I'm storing all this up, you know. All of it. And one day, Edward Catflap, out of the blue, completely by surprise, you're going to die. <laughs> Everyone will think it's an accident, except me and the strange enigmatic figure with the chainsaw. <laughs> oh, oh, ah, 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 ah. 
Right, now, uh, where were we? We were here. We haven't moved. Nice gag. <laughs> right, now let's have supper and decide what to do about those blackmailing gnolls. We can't have any supper. We're completely broke and there's no food. We're completely broke and there's no food. Shall I go for the big echo gag? No, there's no time. We've got to decide what to do about those thieving gnolls. Well, I could have done it in the time it took to say that. All right, then, bloody do it! Right. Okay. This room's got an echo. <laughs> yes, well, I don't think little and large have got a lot to worry about, do you? Uh, I'm oh, do you have the ketchup? Uh, no. Look, we've got two problems. There's no food and the Nolans. What are we going to do? Eat the Nolans! <laughs> we can't eat the Nolans, sisters. It'd be showbiz suicide. Besides, if you start something like that, you better be sure you can finish it. Well, there's only four of them, and I'm starving. <laughs> no, 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 that's not what I mean. What I mean is, if we eat them, where will it all end? We eat them, Bucks Fizz eat us. Yes. Brotherhood of Man eats Bucks Fizz. Jimmy Osmond eats Brotherhood of Man. That's right. And before you know it, there'll just be one huge, enormous middle of the road singer left in the whole of light entertainment. And Demis Winchos will be back at number one. It just doesn't bear thinking about. <sighs> I've got it! Yes! We shall have to think of something else! Brilliant! <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Hello, boys. Ooh. Anybody got a fag? Don't worry. I'll smoke my own. <laughs> you filthy. Smoke your own fags, are you ill? I'm always whatever <laughs> you know that. No. I have just made a thousand quid. <gasps> <laughs> With any luck, I should die before I can spend it all, which means I need never be poor again. You filthy, a thousand quid! I don't understand! Why, well, it's just like one quid, Richie, only there's more of them. <laughs> Try to think of it as like a thousand quid. Wow! That's like two thousand appearances on Blankety Blank! <laughs> Interesting bit of business, really. This mad old bag who cleans my office splats the odd canvas. So I trolled up to Hampstead and uh, bunged one up on a railing. And I sold it to this old git who thought she was famous for a thousand quid. <laughs> oh, pull the other one, filthy. It's got balls on. Bells, Eddie. Bells on. <laughs> Mine's got balls on, mate. <laughs> if yours has got bells on, I suggest you seek a doctor out immediately. <laughs> filthy, you mean the mistaken snob value made the painting valuable? Exactly. Mm. Hello. Nasty John's cock and dog fights. Yes, I can hold. Hmm? A thousand quid is exactly what you owe the Knowles. I know. <laughs> Hello, Nasty John. Yeah, I hear you're putting up a bunch of mixomatosed rabbits against a three-legged cat. <laughs> uh, a fiver on the moggy. No, a fiver on each ghoulie. Richie! Yes? I said a thousand quid. It's exactly what you owe the Knowles. I know. I told you that in the first place. Have you got any children fighting today? Oh, oh. Eddie, lock the door. Right. <laughs> right, Milky, hand over the cash, or you'll be pushing up daisies in a concrete overcoat dumped in the canal with your pockets full of pebbles. <laughs> Getting carried out of here in a box. Are you threatening me? Just give me the cash. Just do it or so help me, I'll swing for you! Go on, I'm desperate! Richie, Richie, please don't shout. Your mother's got very sensitive ears. They bleed when people ask me for money. Come on, filthy, just hand over the cash. My boy Richie's been blackmailed by the Nolan sisters. Shh. She'll be shamed and humiliated. So what's new? <laughs> Boy, Richie, what is new? <laughs> Hello, enormous Derek. Yeah, Ralph filthy here. Help. Trying to call for help, eh? Right. <laughs> yeah. Two close and boner eeks of my acquaintance are trying to rob me. <laughs> yeah. So get your chainsaw and come down to 33 Acacia cul-de-sac, would you? And by a process of elimination. <laughs> Have you got all that in? Right. Ta-ta. There you are, Eddie. <coughs> <laughs> well, 
done, Eddie. When quick and decisive action is called for, we can always rely on you to destroy the house. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know! Let's kill him! Brilliant! Oh, no, no. Richie, Richie, darling. You've got it all wrong. The agent is supposed to rob the client. Please don't flaunt tradition. Remember, Balgy, no, madam, it's not a third leg, McBalgy. <laughs> I represented him for years. I caught him watering my whiskey once. He never worked again. He never worked before, filthy. He was worse than Richie. Oh, come on, he wasn't that bad. No, the point is, I hate people watering my whiskey, oh. and I never forgive. I hate people peeing in my boots. Yeah. <laughs> you still drank it, didn't you? Yeah, but that's not the point. <laughs> come on, come on, kill him! All right. Goodbye, filthy Ralph. <sighs> oh, how sharper than the serpent's tooth it is to have an ungrateful client. <laughs> Why do you think I came over here, Richie Darling, if not to share in with you in my good fortune? What's mine is yours. Ah. Oh. Watch out, Richie. He's got syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Close your eyes and open your hands. Ah! Oh. oh, what fun! I remember doing this at school. One of my friends said to me, Hey, Richie, feel this. Hey, steady on, Richie. <gasps> Eddie, he's trying to escape. Stop him. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. Open your eyes first. That is an idea. <laughs> Idea, no, 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 just having a rest, yeah. I'm going in. Quick, flush the lamp, filthy. It'd be worth the ground just to see Eddie go down the toilet. Oh, no, we need the cash. I'll tell you something, I'm never lending in my comb again. <laughs> well, I regret to say I could not see it. <laughs> Pipe whiffs like nobody's business. Richie, it's a sewer. It whiffs like everybody's business. <sighs> <sighs> well, I suppose it was inevitable if I acquired a binju pile of rhino, it couldn't last. But I could have wished it a more dignified end. Anybody got anything to drink? Filthy! This is not the attitude that wins. When Mike Winters left Bernie, did Bernie sit on the lavatory and have a drink? No, he went out and bought a dog called Schnorbitz and a showbiz legend was born. <laughs> it's not my problem, Richie. I have already alerted enormous Derek. I have activated a highly trained and dedicated professional killer. Mm. Or to put it another way, I phoned a big bastard with no brain who likes dressing up in women's underwear and I've got the photos. <laughs> so unless you and Eddie pay me my thousand pounds back by tonight, it's roller blinds for the both of you. <gasps> hey, roller blinds? Ah, oh, sorry, curtains. <laughs> <laughs> curtains. <gasps> God, what are we gonna do? Shove over, old friend. <gasps> of course. Filthy made that thousand quid out of that strange painting episode. Of course. Yes. <laughs> are you thinking what I'm thinking, Eddie? I was thinking about making money. Come along, Edward. We're going to make you into an artist, so get out your easel. Oh, uh. I'm not prepared to rise to it, Edward. Come, we repair to Hampstead. Right. Extra. Extra. I'm an extra. <laughs> Come on, my lovelies. Get your paintings here. Well, have you sold any yet? You must have sold hundreds. I've been singing your praises all over Hampstead. How many have you sold? Um, none. <laughs> I have incredibly high hopes for my new piece, entitled simply... Whoa! Like Helen, until now I was blind. At last I behold life as it really is. Oh, God, fans. It's a bore, I know. But I do always say, without the fans, even I would be nowhere. Tarby feels the same, and Kenny Lynch. <laughs> Bobby Dabra said the same thing. I said, Bobby, love you. Oh, no, well... <gasps> Away, imbecile! Oh, my God, a psycho fan! He's probably got a gun! John Lennon syndrome! Call the police! <laughs> Peasant, this is the art critic. Alphonse Buffati. Perhaps something in this horrifying collage of mental vomit has moved his soul. Personally, it moves only my bowels. Who is Eduardo Catfletto? 
Who wants to know? Fatso! <laughs> uh, Such anger! <laughs> My friend, you are a genius! <laughs> I intend to exhibit your work. Beg your pardon? I intend to exhibit your work. Oh, right. Soon you will be famous and rich. Right! How about a bit in advance? But of course, of course! Take, take, give, take! Give! Give! And in return, perhaps I might choose that one. Ah, uh, that's not actually a painting. That's my lunch. It disagreed with me. But you can have it for a thousand quid. Magnificent. Have it scraped up for me while I telephone the Guardian. Run, Alphonse. It worked. It bloody worked. Come on, let's go and celebrate. Ah! Ah! Hello. It's all right. We got money. <laughs> This is what a restaurant looks like. <sighs> mm. Fantastic. Try some of this, Richie. <laughs> Fantastic. I'll have five. Okay, okay, skip. <laughs> Wait, I come over here quickly before I call the seat. Slap up grills, please. Egg, sauce, bake, black pud, bloater, uh, onions, mushos, pizos, chippos, buttered slicios. Uh, in short, two heart attacks and a coronary intensive care unit, please. And an alka seltzer in an unfeasibly large brandy, please. <laughs> I'm afraid, sir, we don't do fry ups. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to see the menu. Yes, we would. <laughs> that looks great, but that looks great. <laughs> well, my proud beauty, I think we're going to have a classic nosh up here. Yeah. And if we... Could I have your autograph, please? <gasps> oh, God, more fans. Still, if I'm not used to it now, I never will be. What name is it, lover? I heard what Mr Pufati said about your work. I've never met a celebrity before. <laughs> <laughs> I agreed with every word. Such passion, such fire. Uh -huh. If you want to see a bit of fiery passion, baby, you only have to ask. <laughs> God bless, look after Mum. Who else? Sounds a bit rude. Richie, I don't think she's recognised you at all, have you, darling? No. Who is he? Oh, what are you talking about, Eddie? Oh, what an interesting tablecloth. There you go, baby. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> to £250 each. Payment in advance. Why, of course. There's mine, but I'm not paying for his. You just paid for my tea this instant, Mr Edward Catflap. No! You pushed me around long enough. Ever since I became your wanderer, I've been stormed and ordered about. Do this, Eddie! Do that, Eddie! Yeah, but you never did any of the bloody things! Well, that's not the point, is it? I wanted to be someone. I could have been a contender. But no, you're always out there in front, pushing, barging, farting. Well, it's still as wearing that farting trousers now, and I don't need Mr. Big Head Bloody Rick, so up yours! I'm not playing for your tuck! Have you no honour? No integrity? That's a bloody stupid question. <laughs> yes, I suppose so, yes. Oh, oh thank you, Garcon. Oh, get off, get off, and get out! Well, I just hope you got changed for 30 pieces of silver, Judas! <laughs> It's my pathetic joke won't get that far. No, I don't think the show's that bad. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, welcome. It gives me enormous pleasure to sit on bath taps. No. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It gives me, of course, enormous pleasure to open this premiere exhibition. Uh, you know, there comes to us occasionally of a time, yes, a force, a gift from God, a gift of fire and passion. Such a gift is Eduardo Catflap. Hello! Everything he produces is a work of art. Quite bloody right. <laughs> <laughs> that was my 
greatest effort. Yeah. It's called Belching in an Art Gallery. <laughs> yes, I say. Who wants to buy it? Of course. <laughs> Flatulence. The only truly disposable art form. Um, I bid... 250. Oh, come on. I was about to bid then. Oh, my bid stands. Oh! Consumed with discontent. Consumed, I tell you. Despite our wager, it was my hope that I would be proved wrong. Alas, I overestimated the art establishment. They are sheep. They will follow any fashion. We bet that you could find the most gross, talentless, oikish, just part of a painter. A genuine, world-class head of a dick. And with your influence, make the public think him an exciting artist. Mm, and to my shame and disappointment, I have done so. And you owe me 20,000 of your English pundies. <laughs> your are the English pundies. So that's your little game. And guess who heard it all? Who? Me, Richie Bloody Rich. And the price of my silence is that 20,000. And the promise that your end is ridiculous, Sherrard, that's making my bloody mind the more famous than me. There you are. Come, no bent. No bent. <laughs> my God. Alphonse Nobbend. <laughs> Nobbend of Pooh Farty. What a script. Get out. Let's, let's go, Nobbend, to some situation comedy where they appreciate our lavatorial brand. <laughs> 20 foul and a bloody difficult plot tied up into the bargain. <laughs> but you never thought we'd get out of that in half an hour. But we did it simply by being stupid. Hello, Richie. Uh, come to see my exhibition. No, mate, I've come to close it. You've been the ignorant dupe of these two arrogant ponzies trying to prove a point. I thought something was a bit strange. I just sold my pants for 500 quid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, you, I just ended your career for 20 pounds, which, after I've paid off for Knowles and Phil, becomes to 18 pounds, of which you won't be getting any. <laughs> Enormous Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> Have a thousand pounds. <laughs> right, let's go and pay off the Nolans. No need to do that, Richie. I've already paid them off with my burp and pants money. Forgive me, Edward, but it would seem to be a bijou bit Ed, out of character for you to perform an act of kindness. Well, I haven't really performed an act of kindness, filthy, because I still have the incriminating film. <laughs> ah, so, uh, I'll just take my 18 grand and we'll celebrate, shall we? Richard, carry me back to the flat. And no farting. We're going to have the most disgusting, depraved, debauched party! OK, girls, do it now! <laughs>
me see, let me see. Ah, oh, the groaning board, the teeming table, the endless variety of God's bounty. <laughs> Shipping is a truly perfect art, <clears throat> far above mere painting or sculpture. You can't eat a sheet of canvas or a lump of rock. Oh, I don't know. You could if you were drunk enough and had enough ketchup. <laughs> Morning, Richie. Do my senses deceive me? Has Eddie Catfrap emerged from the arms of Morpheus, or perhaps a nearby elephant has blown off? No. Right first time, it is I, Smelly Eddie. To whiffy Mr. Love him. Ready for anything as long as it's alcoholic. Morning, Richie. Where's my shopping list? Gas mask. <laughs> <laughs> Now then, shall we have seven courses or eight? Don't want to look ostentatious. Well, if you ever hand don't want to look like a bloody pauper. <laughs> Better make it 12. We could always be like the Romans and throw up between courses. You know, I don't see why the Romans should get all that credit for that idea. I mean, I've been doing it for years. Morning, Richie. <clears throat> 12 gas masks, <laughs> clothes peg for nose, smelling salts, and a one-way ticket to Australia to get away from Eddie's whiff. I said morning, Richie! <laughs> I got you then, didn't I? I got you! <laughs> Morning, Eddie. I trust you slept well? Fantastic! A truly great sleep. On a scale of one to five, five million four hundred and twenty-nine thousand five hundred and sixty-two. You find sleeping face down in the toilet conducive to rest or slumber. <laughs> and why shouldn't I sleep in the lavatory? You wet the bed. <laughs> Once. Once, I, I had a terrible nightmare, but I was ordinary and untalented. And there was a momentary aberration. It's a sign of having an extra vivid subconscious. It's a sign of having an extra dripping tiddler. <laughs> Eddie, I was having a nightmare, but I was a pleb. It was a horrifying experience. I remember the night so well. I awoke to hear Richie screaming into the middle of the night. Ah, his heart rending sobs echoing round the house. Why, you wept like a soul in torment. I rushed in. To find poor, frightened Richie, shivering, terrified, white, sitting in a puddle. Yes, and what did you do? I don't remember. You switched on my electric blanket. <laughs> Only to take your mind off the nightmare. You completely electrocuted my love truncheon. <laughs> love truncheon? Love pencil, more like. Well, love pin, actually. Eddie, what's this? <laughs> I don't know. It's one of my scary looks, isn't it? <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> my intimidating frown, so you just watch out. Right. Has the hair grown back yet? Your love blobs look like Yul Brenner snogging with Kojak. <laughs> I'm not prepared to rise to it, Eddie. Your spite and venom offends me not. Baldy blobs. <laughs> right, that's it. No, seriously, that is it. I hope you've got a good lawyer, Edward Catlap, because I'm suing and you're going to prison forever. Hello, Filthy? Yeah, it's Richie here. I want to sue Eddie. Richie Rich, your client. Well, I'm about five foot ten, brown hair. But look, it's not important. My minder, Edward, says that I've got bald love blobs and I want to sue. <laughs> Have I? Well, they're not so much bald as receding, really. Well, I could put a wig on both for the trial. Bloodsucker, what am I paying you for? I oh, know I don't. It was a rhetorical question. <laughs> Goodbye forever. He was furious. <laughs> But I persuaded him to give you another chance. Oh, shut up, Richie. And tell me why you are wearing a hat that makes you look like you've got a toilet roll on your head. Because, Eddie, I have taken up the skillet and the frying pan. I've been studying cookery all morning, and I am now a master chef. That's why I'm wearing this great hat. Well, you look like a chicken drumstick. <laughs> Ha-ha, wrong again, because actually I look great. <laughs> oh. We are having a dinner party. Oh, -ho -ho. Eight for eight thirty. The food, the fine wine, the the little chocolatey minty fingers. Uh, who's coming? Oh, just one or two close personal friends. Oh dear. The man from the dirty mag shop and wino Bill again. <laughs> you really are insanely jealous, aren't you, Edward? I keep forgetting, of course, you're not in the biz, are you? <laughs> the huge, fantastic galaxy of showbiz stars are all brothers and sisters to me. Tarby, for instance, is bound to accept. <laughs> Especially after the brilliant invitations I sent out. <laughs> the years and the tears. Come and celebrate Richie Rich's ten fabulous years of success. How sad. From third dummy in the window on Are You Being Served to his very own carpet ad. Look, I'm not sitting at the same table as Tarby, and that's that. 
No, Eddie, no, no, no. We're talking about Jimmy Tarbuck. <laughs> Cheeky Chuck from Papool. Everybody's pal. But Jolly Gap Tooth Scouser with a twinkle in his eye and a smile for every honest Englishman. Look, if there's one thing I hate in British entertainment more than you, it's that vast army of ex stand up comics who did one half funny gag on Sunday night at the London Palladium in the middle 60s and have made a fortune doing game shows ever since. Oh, good evening! And your name is Cynthia, and you'd like me to patronise and humiliate you on the off chance of winning a cheese made. Chicken <laughs> chappies? More like complete and utter bastards, if you ask me. Yes, I don't think anyone will be asking you, will they, Eddie? <laughs> Toby is just a simple jester. An honest broker from the Bank of Smiles. I was only saying so to Marty Kane just now before her last trip to South Africa. <laughs> so I'll thank you to keep your embittered communistic treason to yourself during tonight's intercourse with Tarby and friends. <laughs> I am not having intercourse with Tarby, and that's final. <laughs> well, what a surprise! Four minutes into the episode, and Eddie Catflap delivers the most tortuous old double entendre in history. It was a great gag! Social intercourse, Eddie. Social. Oh, phew. We shall talk about subjects far above your head. Poetry, <laughs> fine arts, <laughs> golf. Oh, that reminds me. I must bone up on Tarby's book of golfing anecdotes. They are the greatest work of English since Dick. Oh, uh. Dick Inns, Eddie, Dick Inns. <laughs> oh, uh. There's only one thing I hate more than golfing anecdotes, and it's this. <laughs> it's a close run thing, though. Uh, 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 uh. This is brilliant stuff. This is classic, classic, classic. Well done, Tarby. Oh. Oh, listen to this one. Oh. Oh, listen, 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 Chatham, Chatham. Lynchy and I had taken time off and flown to Spain with Greavesy and Parky and Tom O'Connery to play some golf with Leslie. Leslie? Yeah. They were playing golf with lesbians. <laughs> Fantastic. Do you think Tarbuck's a feminist, then? Leslie Cryvery, Eddie. Leslie Cryvery. <laughs> He's just another one of the great guys that make up my fantastic showbiz gang that I belong to and you don't. <laughs> hey, shut up. I'm telling you the great anecdote. <clears throat> Lynchy lined up to tee off. Well, I wish you'd bloody tee off and leave me to spread my packs in peace. Lynchy lined up to tee off and said to me, Gosh, Tarbo, we swigged so much pot last night being great guys together and being such great big showbiz mates, but I bet I missed this next shot. And blow me down, but he did. He missed it. <laughs> <laughs> No, the same thing has happened to me fifty times. Well, I can see it's going to be a pretty scintillating evening with everyone cracking Brillo gags like that one. Yeah. Hey, maybe there's a series in it. Dinner at Richie's. An ultra sophist chat show. Good evening, this is the BBC. Tonight, Sir Richie Rich will be talking to uh, the Queen, the Pope, and, of course, the Tarby. <laughs> it'll be a disaster. You get completely drunk and make a pass at the Pope for wearing a dress. <laughs> Bloody good telly, though. True. So, what incredible 12 courses are you going to cook for these fantastically amiable showbiz chums of yours? <laughs> well, we must play to our strengths. We must not overreach ourselves. Right, yes. <sighs> How does 12 more legs sound? Uh, usually like this. <laughs> <laughs> nice guy, Eddie, and totally unexpected. Yeah. Perhaps a little sophisticated for BBC Two, though. Yeah. I can just see it now. How's the golf going, Tobbs? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Do you want to hear a really stupid joke about an Irishman being stupid? <laughs> oh, wait. Well, what do you suggest, then? You're supposed to be my friend, you vicious freeloading parasite. Smell it, Eddie, to the rescue. When I was watching TV AM in the lab this morning, I saw this fantastic ad for a new mag called Ponzi Cooking. And when you buy part one, you get part two completely free. Well, that sounds like a marvellous offer, Edward, and one not to be missed. Well, actually, it's just a rather clumsy setup for a gag later on. Oh, for sure. Yes. Let's go to the news agents anyway. Okay, you know, diddly squat, over we go. Don't ever say I'm not there when I'm not needed. You're not there when you're not needed. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> ready, ready? Ready, ready. Let's go. Right, then. <sighs> Blimey. 
The news agents has got a lot closer since we moved into a smaller studio. <laughs> shut up, Eddie, shut up. You're spoiling the magic for everyone. <laughs> oh, oh, look, the news agent. <clears throat> Hello, my old darling. Yep, it's me, Richie Rich. Uh, don't faint. Treasure the moment. Here's a pig. Put it in the box to keep the precious things and show your kids. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I'm sure. One of the cool types, are we? Gonna boast to your friends, are you? I met Richie Rich this morning and I pretended I didn't recognise him. Hee hee hee. What a sad little life you must lead. Are you mad? That's what I yes. Excuse me. Do you have part one of Ponzi cooking with part two completely free? Certainly. One pound, please. Aha! I'm afraid I have no money, so I'll just take part two for nothing, shall I? Ha ha ha! Stupid slag! Come on, Richard! <laughs> one pound, please. Uh, 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 I'll give you a mention on my next programme. I shall send to the police. No, you won't, darling, because your part's over. Yeah, it's the end of your scene. Back to the doll for you, love. Five lines, thank you, and good night. <laughs> Well, I must say, this looks very interesting. It's fine, you know. That, Eddie, is the biz. It's a tough life. It's a tough life, dearie. I mean, look at Arthur Mullard. She used to be quite attractive. Oh. I still quite fancy her. Yeah. <laughs> well, I must say, this is very interesting. Yeah. Must learn to read sometime. <laughs> right. Sort of this health food. When I eat, I like to dice with a heart attack. Let's have a good traditional English roast. We have a coronary from basis to follow. Right, let's make a shopping list. Yeah. 400 pounds of oven chips. Right, well, that seems simple enough. Yeah. <laughs> Better check the larder first. Waste not, what not. Mm. Always remember there are poor children in the world. Oh, the little poor children. Yeah. <laughs> With their cosy little terrace dwellings. A roaring fire. Bread, cheese. Dripping. Add a little love. Yeah. Makes a meal, meal fit, fit for a king. king. <laughs> I honestly think they're happier being poor. Yes, or perhaps not. Oh, well, who gives a toss anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Let's check what's in the lot. Any food? Um, only a couple of dirty mags. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a reason why we shouldn't be doing this, but I just can't quite put my finger on it at the moment. Try not to overtax your tiny mind, Eddie. At the moment, it's concentrating on breathing. <clears throat> oh, shut up, you stupid slag. The check's in the post. Yeah, who the hell showed you think this is anyway? I'm the famous one, love. <laughs> Come, Eddie. Let us go to the supermarket. Right. <laughs> what a rotten shop. Is there anything you want to buy? For example, <laughs> Crusoe's. Bite-sized cruise missile-shaped lumps of potato-flavoured snack. <laughs> Warning, this product gives you cancer. Blimey, everything gives you cancer these days. You can't blow off without someone telling you it's casting a jelly. <laughs> Mind you, in my case, I think it probably is. Probably. Oh, careful, Eddie, you'll get grabbed by the dick. Ooh, hey! <laughs> we really need to get arrested by the store detective viewers. It was just a pun we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> we have every intention of paying for this item. Every intention. Ooh, Eddie. Ooh. It'd be funny if somebody knocked that lot down, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not particularly now. <loud. laughs> I'm disappointed myself. Come and eat for fruit. <laughs> it is, of course, the absolute sophist thing to offer fruit at the end of the meal. So refreshing, and of course it comes in jolly handy for the sex Ooh, games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and bruised. I shall write to Esther Ranson. Ah, for meat, Eddie. Ha, load up a trolley full. They'll have been playing golf all day, so they'll be ready for some hearty vitals. <laughs> Just look at this little lamb chop. It was probably once a pig gambling about <laughs> the mountain. Yeah. Dying, you're dying, you're dying. <laughs> you know, Eddie, I could quite fancy myself as a farmer. Well, it's a good job you do fancy yourself, because I can't see that anyone else is going to do it. <laughs> Eddie, do you see this frozen chicken? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh. Practice that a frozen tackle to teach you not to cheat Richie Rich. Richie Rich, do you see this frozen chicken? No, I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha! Touche, Eddie. <laughs> Come on, let's go and pay for the staff. Uh, I've just remembered why it is we shouldn't be here. We have no cash. Eddie, I am a celebrity! <laughs> Celebrities don't need money. Next. Oh, 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 oh. Boo! Hello, love, it's me, 
Richie Rich. Uh -huh. Mwah. Look, it's just this packet of cans of crunch and a trolley full of meat. Let us off and I'll give you a mention on my next probe. £200, please. <sighs> my dear girl, you don't seem to understand. I, Richie Rich, am offering you, nobody, a mench on my next probe. Right, I can see this is going to require some subtle handling. £200. <laughs> How does it feel to know that you're a checkout gal and you've reached the peak of your potential? How does it feel to know that you're a talentless guess and you never even had any potential? I see. Two hundred pounds, please. <clears throat> <laughs> Stitch that. Hi, me, Richie. I think you're on there. Oh, no, come on when I see it. For God's sake, this is ridiculous. Somebody here tell Donkey Face who I am. <laughs> We don't know. Who are you? You jest. You tape. I'm one of Britain's top comic talents. Say something funny, then. Yeah. If you're so funny, Richie, why don't you say something funny? Just go on, say something funny. All right, then, all right. I will, I will. Um... Plop. <laughs> Damn, mistimed it. Please be allowed to get the manager. Mr. Forsyth. Listen, bitch. I was once continuity leak man on TVS. I don't see why I should have to pay for my food. Listen, dickhead. No money, no food. <laughs> you know, you're the sort of girl I could really fall in love with. However, no time, because, Richie, yes. run. <laughs> I meant through the door. Uh, sorry. Oh. Stamina. Still safe and sound at home now and plenty of time to get on with my wonderful dinner party. That's what you think. But I have been thinking. Well, well, well. Wonders will never cease. Eddie Catbrab's been thinking. Put out some bunting. Organise a street party. Let off some fireworks. Telephone the Queen. Give everyone a week's holiday. The man with no brains been thinking. Everybody going to have a lavatory in amazement. I don't know how you wound, Richie. You really don't. However, no matter, because you will soon be in pris. Pris? Pris on. You have just aided and abetted a robbery in front of Mr Forsyth and 50 <sighs> mad checkout girls. <sighs> I, of course, am all right. I was just the mysteriously handsome bloke in the huge attractive trousers who vanished without a trace. But you, you're Richie Rich, <gasps> and you'll be going to pris. You're not all right, darling. You're not all right, because I shall squeal. Yeah, I shall sing and, and blab, and then I might even spill a little bit. <sighs> and I shall buy a lighter sentence with the names of my accomplices, to wit, Edward Catflap. And then I shall have a facelift so you can't exact your blood-curdling revenge. You'd need a forklift truck to lift your face, matey. <laughs> well, at least I've got a face, not a sort of collage of bogeys and sick. <laughs> Just because you never get any girlfriends, you think you can take it out on me? Me? You never get any girlfriends? Ha! That's rich. It's you, you never get any girlfriends. I was out with a girl last Wednesday. Eddie, that was your mother. <laughs> I still got a snog. <laughs> snog? Well, more of a fight, really. She beat me senseless. Who oh, she beat you senseless? That must have taken at least ten seconds. Fifteen seconds, actually, Richie. Eddie, we are about to be sent to Devil's Island for a thousand years. Tommy's coming round for the most important dinner party of my life, and you're babbling on about your insane mother. We're up block freak with no loo brush. I'll telephone my agent. That's a good idea. Let's blame him. Yeah. Hey, what if he won't take the rap? Tell him we'll go to the papes about his children's catalogue. Nice thinking. <laughs> Hello, filthy. Yeah, God bless. Look after Mum. Drive safely. Listen, you filthy, evil porno merchant. Me and Eddie are in deep trouble. And unless you take the blame, we'll tell the world the truth about your so-called stage school. Please, daughter, please. Please. Listen, I am not a well man. This morning I coughed so hard I sucked my trousers up my backside. <laughs> now, listen, listen, Richie. Nobody needs to take the rap for this. What you have got to get yourself is an alibi. Yeah, no, don't shout, daughter, don't shout. There's only so much an agent can take after only one bottle of aspirin. <laughs> now, look, Richie, alibis are easy. You're a comic, right? Well, loosely speaking, of course. <laughs> yeah, you were doing a show. <clears throat> no, 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 that's easy. All we have to do is to get you a real show tonight, 
and then Eddie can crawl around, surreptitiously turn all the audience's watches back to the time you blagged the store. <laughs> yes, yes, I oh know, just the venue. Tray chic, tray boner. Yeah, only the nicest young ladies need apply. Filthy. What if Tarby finds out? I shall be thrown out of the Royal Order of the Charitable Self Publicising Showbiz Borgotters. Don't worry about the Borgotters, Richie. They were in here themselves half an hour ago, but they had to leave because they ran out of 50p. <laughs> How's my boy Richie doing? I wouldn't want to face that audience, Richie. They're getting a bit restive at the moment. Trying to see if bouncers really do bounce. Ooh, oh, my, the act did would. Richard has got enough to concern him already, what with being crap. <laughs> anyway, I thought you were supposed to be running around the audience turning their watches back while they ogled the girlies. Well, I was trying to, filthy, but the hands are moving too quickly. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's it. Richie, you're on. Oh, my God, I'm not ready. How do I look, darling? <laughs> not good, daughter. Tray, tray bollocks. He's absolutely bloody right, you know. Pippi stands. Oh, I better get on with my superstitions. <laughs> what are you doing, Richard? My superstition. Whenever Titch, who am Adam, don't start me off juicy went on stage, he always did this. But Titch Juicy was notoriously awful. God, you're right. <laughs> uh, boys and girls, lads and lasses, uh, please welcome to the stage a very funny man indeed. Uh, the world famous Mr. Uh, Richie Rich. <laughs> with his hand up sandbox's blouse. Show your tits. <laughs> but seriously, folks, the good Lord gave us one good present, and that was the gift of laughter. Get off! <laughs> and thank God the likes of Tony Ben can't take that away from us, although he'd probably like to, wouldn't he? That was a joke then, you fat bastard! <laughs> hey, I hear Arthur Scargill's blind stick lost his hairdresser. You have to laugh, don't you? Uh, two, three, four. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you, one and all. The greatest man I possess. The smile of a child, a beautiful woman, just simply being British. And let's thank the mums too, shall we? Hello to all the mums. Here to keep an eye on Dad, are you? It's not going very well, is it? Thank you and good night, one and all. I love you all. Well, tough crowd, but I think I got the measure of them. Oh, <laughs> well, that's kind. They probably couldn't afford flowers. That's what we do for our nice dinner party. Retrie, I've got some rather bad news for you. You're under arrest. That's the bad news. Oh, come on. I wasn't that bad. I may have stumbled on a couple of punchlines. It was our alibi. It collapsed. Mr Forsyth, he followed us down here. It's press for us. Are you coming quietly, sir? No, it's just the way I walk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind that. I want my public to know that as you led me to the block, I was still cracking woofers. Very well, sir. Uh, did you say woofers or ancient old doodle on song that everybody else gave up in the playground? Oh, what a clever thing to say! <laughs> How brainy you are! Got a degree, have you? Just because you earn four times as much as a nurse, you've been getting cheap, richy rich, do you? <laughs> <laughs> now, that's what I like to say. A good old-fashioned bobby. <laughs> Don't worry, Richie. These days, prison food is quite acceptable. Mind you, it's not so nice when they nail you to the table and shove it up your backside. <laughs> <sighs> well, Eddie, the long and winding road is over. The great god public claims another weary showbiz victim. Oscar Wilde, playwright, arrested for his beliefs. Lenny Bruce, comedian, arrested for his beliefs. 
Richie Rich, celebrity, arrested. We're going nicking down the local shop. <laughs> <sighs> It'll be the trial of a century. I shall be tried in majestic splendor by a jury of my peers. Parky, Tarby, Lynchy, Sue Lawley, Annie Diamondy, <laughs> Debbie Greenwoody, Selena Smitty, <laughs> Maggie Phil Beanie. Bloody hell, what a fantastic jury! Hey, we might even be on for a bit of a sex sesh after the trial. Yeah, it's all right. Said, of course, you won't be there because you'll be in prison. <laughs> I'll be all right, though. I'm going to plead insanity. Damn, let's face it, you've got the evidence. Let me out! I need a lawyer! I want my lawyer! Watch <laughs> out, Richie. It oscillates the atmos and rattles my phlegm. <laughs> I found you a lawyer. Who? Met him outside, known him for years. Spurty. Pervy Sir Peter Spurty, you see. <laughs> Bit of luck in being here, really. You'll get anyone off if you buy him a dirty mag. <laughs> you remember when the whole Tory cabinet were found in that child brothel discussing declining moral values? Clear as a bell. Pervy Sir Peter Spurty got them off. Right. He's a man for us. Bring us our law. We demand Pervy Sir Pete. In there, Spurty. Blimey, that was quick. Well done, the police say I. Why these left-wing committees keep sniping at them is beyond me. If you don't want to get beaten up, you shouldn't be poor. It's as simple as that. Richie, shut up. Watch your spurting. Me and my mate Richie are in a bit of a fix and are going to end up doing five to ten in a slammer. Unless you can stitch the jury, rig the judge and buy off the pigs with a serious kickback. <laughs> please, please, please. This is England, Eddie. England. Not Birmingham. <laughs> and the British Bobby cannot be bought. You, show your face. Sorry. What are you offering? I am not offering anything. You must speak to my lawyer. What, old pervy spurty? <laughs> <laughs> right, now, uh, everything seems to be in order here. Uh, I would stand by you, Richie, but lost causes depress me. <laughs> Toodly woodly. <laughs> right, spurty, do your stuff. Oh, no. I wandered into a garden under the impression it was my garden. And on seeing various hydrants of women's laundry hanged on the line, I naturally assumed that my wife had done some washing and I began to gather tin for her. The fact that I live in a high-rise flat and am not mine is entirely circumstantial evidence and hence inadmissible. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we'd better escape. And fly in the face of Leon Britain's Law and Order Initiative? Never! There is no choice. The meat is in my trousers. Tarby is coming round in a couple of hours to hear his fantastic golfing anecdote. And you're banged up in a slammer. Dumbly disgusting. I have never been banged up a slammer in my life. <laughs> well, you're right, we've got to escape. I have a plan. What we have to do is set up a complicated system of stooges to find out exactly what the guards are up to. Then we dig three tunnels and hide the dirt in our trousers. We forge some German documents and make the clothes of some French peasant workers out of these blankets. It's a great night for dying! Then we wheel the wooden horse out into the exercise yard. Yes. We build a glider and we pole vault over the fence. What do you think? Pathetic. Let's do it then. Yeah! Well done, Eddie. I'm sorry I doubted you. Your plan worked brilliantly. Yes. Shame about old Spurty getting shot by the Gestapo. <laughs> no, the SPG, Eddie. The SPG, not the Gestapo. They're completely different things. The Gestapo, um, speak German. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, all right, and that's all that matters. Of course it is, Eddie. Safe and sound at home now, and perhaps now I can get on with preparing for my fantastic dinner party. <laughs> Empty the big trousers! Okie dokie, me old spunky cockspire! <laughs> now then. I've invited Tarby, Lynchy, Parky, Brucey, Tommy O'Connery, and you and me. Have we sufficient comestibles? Oh, uh, I don't know about that, but here's the grub. <laughs> Good Lord, Eddie, how did you get so much meat in your trousers? <laughs> <laughs> That's what all the girls say. <laughs> Smart is the last recourse of the emotional cripple, Eddie. It's a psychological truism, but people talk about that which they cannot do. Oh! And is that why you're always talking about acting, plot pants? <laughs> Perhaps there is a land 
to be on the oblivion of brain death, Eddie, where your cryptic observations would be understood. But to us Earthlings, they are mere mashed potatoes. So keep them to yourself! Richie, it's your choice. I can either stuff the meat into the oven, you into the oven, or the oven into you. Which is it to me? The former. Well, that was the one where the, the oven meat. went in. Look, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter! Tarby's coming round in ten minutes and we haven't cooked the thing! Let's please get this stuff in the oven! Right, <laughs> I'll never get it all in! Oh, huh? Sounds a bit rude! I think I'm gonna need something to lever it in with! Oh, huh? Sounds a bit ruder! <laughs> No matter how much I stuff him, there's still loads more waiting to be pushed in. Oh, ah! This has even ruder than it was before! <laughs> Thank you for these observations, Eddie. I just feel that every culinary exchange should be accompanied by the mad rantings of a brain-dead vegetable. Right, there we are. It's a light. Who is Tommy? Oh, God! Oh, God! Tommy's here! Oh, God, it's Tommy! It's Tommy! It's Lynchy! The whole gang's here! For God's sake, don't do anything rude, Eddie! <laughs> Hope I'm not late, Lubies. Here, I bought you a bottle of wine, but I drank it in a taxi. <laughs> oh, God, I forgot I'd invited you, filthy. You're hardly going to impress my showbiz friends. I'd be impressed if you had any friends, Richie. Right, that's it! I'm, I'm serious, that's it! Your invitation's withdrawn. Go away now. Oh, go on, daughter, do me a favour. <gasps> Where's your sense of humour? Only a bijou joquette. Who? Oh, joke? Oh. Of course <laughs> I'll impress your friends. We'll make a boner little tea. The financial artist. The theatrical artist. And the piss artist. <laughs> it's going to be a truly magical evening. <laughs> right, Those candles burn down first. <laughs> oh, keep it to yourself, Eddie. Much time has passed. Oh, I'm swathed in melancholic pathos. <laughs> oh, uh, shut up, Eddie. I think you've been stood up, Richie. Oh, uh. oh, shut up, Eddie. <laughs> After all I've done, I've done a show in a peep show, I've robbed a supermarket, I've been to prison, and the rotters haven't even turned up. Fate deals me blow after blow. Oh, uh. <laughs> What time did you put on the invites, love? Well, eight o'clock. Look, I've got them here. Tarbies, Bruce's, Lynch's, and... <laughs> I forgot to post the invites. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'd like to speak to Immoral Timothy, please. Yes, I can hold. <laughs> Here you are, filthy. No, you like it hot and steaming. The tea, I mean. May I say what a tremendous pleasure it is to see you. Yes, indeed, he do. How are you? I'm not lending you any money, Eddie, and that's <laughs> final. Hello, yes, Immoral Timothy. 
Yeah, Ralph Filthy here. And now look, look. I've told you before, I don't deal in drugs. Yeah, yeah, well that's why I sold you three ounces of scouring powder. <laughs> yes, well look at it this way, you'll have the cleanest nose in Clapham. <laughs> A fiver then. Now look, immoral Timothy, there's no need to call in huge Simon. I was wondering if you'd accept use of my body in full paint. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm in lovely condition. I only got my new teeth last Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty p. Yeah. Five. Five, five p, filthy. Really, daughter, you do make me tired with your heartless scrounging. Goth fag, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. What sort of a minder are you? Whenever Richie needs you, you're never there. And when he gets beaten up, you join in. <laughs> I don't know why he keeps you on. Filthy. <laughs> Show business is a cruel and lonely world. When you're up, <laughs> everyone wants to be your friend. And when you're down, <laughs> nobody wants to know. Richard sticks by me because he knows amidst all the doubt and hypocrisy, he can count on my feelings. <laughs> he knows I hate him. What is wrong with the boy, Richie? Well, he's trying to write a novel, but he keeps on coming up against the same huge lack of talent. A novel? He's no more a novelist than Geoffrey Archer. And I knew Geoffrey when he was still going to adult literacy class. No, no, Richie should stick to what he's good at. Well, unfortunately, you can't make much cash off lying on the sofa and playing off occasionally. <laughs> Filthy about his cash. I'm serious. Richie hasn't brought home anything in the last three months. Not since he did that wonderful voiceover for Durex. <laughs> I really thought that might turn into a really big contract, you know. For a fantastic finish with no annoying drips, <laughs> slap your brush into Durex. <laughs> Due luck, said he. It was a pain <laughs> Well, whatever. That was three months ago. Now I'm broke again. I'm broke. We're all broke. God, what a country. I'm a sick man. Does the government care? No. My medicine has gone up to eight quid a bottle. Eight quid. And then you have to buy the tonic. <laughs> oh, the blank and empty page. Staring at me. Taunting me. Eddie, how the hell did you plug these bloody things in? <laughs> have you just spent the last four hours trying to plug the typewriter in? What that bloody stupid? Look at this. Look, look. A plug. Right. Two pins at the top, one pin at the bottom. But well, the socket has got two pins at the bottom and one pin at the top. It beggars belief. It completely defies comprehension. <laughs> God, how depressing. It's the wrong way up, daughter. The two pins go in the two holes. Oh, I see. So I suppose I'm supposed to go back in there and turn the wall upside down, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Not even a dirty pamph. <laughs> I've joined the ranks of the other suffering artists. Keats, he suffered. Shelley, she suffered. <laughs> Michael Barrymore, we all suffered. <laughs> Van Gogh, cut his ear off for a smile from his lady. His ear for a smile. Blimey. Lucky you didn't fancy a quick wriggle. <laughs> Suffering's got nothing to do with it, Richie. You have failed through complete lack of talent. <laughs> Au contraire, lesser mortal. <laughs> Despairing of modern technology, I allowed my genius to flow for a simple old-fashioned medium. I dug out the old ballpoint. Oh, uh. Please, Eddie, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> so you have written a novel, then? Better. I have mastered the highest and most complex art form known to man. I have perfected a game show formula. <laughs> a copy has already been dispatched by horny-handed messenger to the nice entertainment department of the BBC where Jumbo Whiffy, the greatest entertainment supremo of modern times, will flip his lid. What? You mean, you just sent it to them? Just like that? No security, no copyright, no nothing? Not even a stamp! Ha! <laughs> Auntie can pay the postage! But daughter, this is show business suicide. If your idea is any good, which I'll admit is a million to one chance, the beeve are bound to pinch it. It happens all the time. Panorama. That was Arthur Mullard's idea originally. 
Yeah, I remember we did lunch. He said to me, Ralph, he said, I've got this magic new idea for a programme of political analysis and current affairs with me as frontman and Thora Heard on links. <laughs> Dimbleby's at the next table playing footsie with Val Singleton <laughs> and Arthur got stitched. <sighs> Poor old Arthur. You better take me with you, Richie. You're gonna need a tough, experienced, hard-headed negotiator. Oh. <laughs> I'm not getting the half slew broken down pornographer. Jumbo and I are artists. We don't want agents spoiling the atmos. Come, Eddie, we go alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. The idea uh, comes from that uh, clapped out, useless, uh, talentless has been Richie Rich. You never heard of him. Yeah, well, you missed nothing. Look, but the main problem is. He wants to present it. <laughs> <laughs> well, dear old scout, it's a while since I sat here. Mr. Whiffy won't be long, I'm sure, Mr. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> it's when old Stewpot picked me to the post for that crackerjack job. <laughs> crackerjack. <laughs> it's all my time, Mr. Rich. <laughs> dear old Stewpot, eh? Hey? Where is he now? A couple of years handing out crackerjack pencils to the snot noses. Crackerjack! <laughs> and then whoops a daisy, oblivion. <laughs> Whereas me, me, <coughs> shoo! <laughs> That's me, meteoric. Best thing that ever happened to me, losing crackerjack to a lesser man. <laughs> crackerjack! Look at him, you stop shouting crackerjack! This is for BBC, not a place of entertainment. <laughs> Did I you a well known voice? Richie Rich, you old bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Put it there. Put your pipe on over there, you old bugger. <laughs> oh, all right then, you old git. <laughs> so, how are you, you old bastard? Oh, pretty good, pretty good, you old foreskin. <laughs> This is my minder, Edward Catflap. Oh, terrific, terrific. Well, look, go get yourself in there and we'll have a drink, you pair of old tarts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind if we do, you wrapped and faced bucket of sex <laughs> uh, Three coffees, please, darling love. Look, if he really is your darling love, I suggest you get your eyes tested while he's still free on the NHS. <laughs> You've met Jill, I take it. I don't know what I'd do without her. Uh, terrific pair of... Uh, Eyes, eh? <laughs> yeah, and fantastic knockers as well, hasn't she? <laughs> yeah, well, sit you down, sit you down, take a few, or as the old sergeant used to say to me, pop your bot on the spot with you, or I'll shove a bayonet up it. <laughs> uh, three more coffees, please, darling. <laughs> right then, Richo. Don't. <clears throat> How much are you going to pay me to present my great new show? Oh, let me take a look at you, you old queen. You look great. Yeah, but what about his idea, Jums? <laughs> Hold it, cowboy, where's the fire? Let's dance around this for a while, knock our heads together and see if you can end up on my lap, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> uh, hang on, Richie, we're not homosexuals, are we? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Now, look, Richie, don't think I'm saying your idea is not sexy, but can I afford to go to bed with it? Or am I looking for a completely different kind of lover, eh? But I've got to run it up the old flagpole, see if the cat wants to lick it. <laughs> uh, yes, but are you going to give me the job? Uh, bum face. <laughs> uh, three more copies, please, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, let me put it this way. When I first came into this office, there was a fat old drunk sat behind that desk mumbling platitudes. And it was me. <laughs> and I'm still there. You see the way I'm thinking, Richard? No! Yes, yes, yes we do, Jones, yes, yes. But are you going to do my new show? Come on, let's buy you a drink, me old mate. I've asked Iggy Guffer, our uh, finance and budget troubleshooter, to join us for a swift one. Or ten, <laughs> mate. <laughs> ten? We try not to get pissed or something. <laughs>
new series. Yeah, about the new series. Now, I've asked uh, Eggie here to fly a few proposals past the saluting platform, see which one of them develops in jet failure. Now, I... Oh, oh, very nice, thank you. That'll do for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoa, blimey! <laughs> what are we looking at? <laughs> now, Eggy, regarding baseline options on a new Richie Rich series layout initiative, what are we talking there? Uh, all the pistols or cruise missiles? Well, uh, oh, I say, <laughs> down, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Should be allowed, girl like that, get a married man like me into trouble. Hey, get me to a gold shot. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm so yeah. glad I'm wearing my trousers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 so, the new series. Now, Richie, I've read the outline treatment and I like what I see. No question there. Fantastic! Right, I want Terry Scott's dressing room. No, no. Get Selena Scott. Yeah, I want Selena Scott this room, and don't bother tidying up the undies. <laughs> hang on, Richie, hang on. Look, I like playing myself. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it five nights a week, prime time on Channel One. <laughs> now, run your idea past Eggy here and see if he wants to stick his hand up your blouse. Jumbo, believe me, I respect you for holding back. This guy, Eggy. This man. <laughs> this man, Eggy. This man, Jumbo Whippy, who I knew. Who I knew when he was only a quarter of a ton. This man. <laughs> The man, Eggie, the man who brought Keith Harrison Orville into Television Centre. It's the nearest thing that I've got to family. Oh, sod off, you old queen. Oh, oh yours, you ratty, <laughs> dribbling zit. Yeah, screw you, you complacent, misogynistic bum splat. <laughs> That's the kind of showbiz friendship these new boys don't have. <laughs> Run your idea by me, Sasha. Get this. You're gonna flip your flipping lid. All star golfing secrets. I like it. Good telly. <sighs> it's a hot one. I'll feel exactly the same way I felt when I first got a sniff of Bernard Manning. Eggy, what say you? It's big. Put this out against play your cards right and blow Brucey off the box. Let's go, contract. Uh, I shouldn't really be signing without my agent, Filthy Ralph. I'll oh, get on with it. Maybe they'll get another round. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Thank God someone's still got their feet on the ground. There. <laughs> when do we start? You don't start at all. We only wanted the idea, which you've just signed over to us for two pints of lager, <laughs> which you've had. We want Davro for the presenter. Jumbo, we do not make gags about talentless creeps. He does good impressions. Look at Copycat. Okay. No one has ever recognised a single impression of copycats, except when they say something like, Hello, my name's Betty from Crossroads, <laughs> in an Irish accent. We rate Davro very highly indeed. He's the next Tarby. And you're a talentless moron. So we're going to pinch your idea, stick Davro in the lead, and you can bugger off to a short has been for give us a clue. <laughs> oh, God. Still alive. <laughs> It was something I meant to do before I nodded off. Oh, yeah, put my fag out. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I hate doing that, going to sleep with a fag still on. Did you get the job or did they cheat you? <laughs> yes and no. You did get the job and they didn't cheat you. Sorry, no and yes. They nicked my idea, those BBC bastards. I'll show them. I'll make myself into a TV megastar. Bigger than Judith Chalmers. That's absolutely bloody enormous. Jumbo Whippy will beg me to work for him. The only way you'll ever get back on telly, Richie, is robbing a sweet shop and getting on police fire. <laughs> Actually, that's not too bad an idea, Addy. Filthy, get me an advert. Get me an advert, please, Filthy. A good ad always sorts things out. Yeah, that's true. Look at Leslie Crowder. Yeah, or rather not. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yes, if it was bad, was it? Get that one down, Eddie. Good gag. I felt like throwing it up. <laughs> we all thought Leslie was finished after my good woman. Yeah, but then he did the mar dance, and before you know it, it's come on down and make a complete tit of yourself. <laughs> What are we talking about? You couldn't do an ad, Richie. Not a personality one anyway. You haven't got a personality. All right, all right. Don't rub it in. No one's going to buy a toilet roll because you've got it in your mouth. <laughs> Nobody. All right, all right. Selena Scott, am I forever to be surrounded by pontoons? <laughs> you don't necessarily need to be famous to get on an advert anyway. You've just got to have a good idea. Like, for example, someone decided to sell instant noodles on the grounds that they taste nice. It's outrageous. It's brilliant. <laughs> What about that dog you're supposed to wipe your bottom with? <laughs> if you are referring to the gorgeous little Amphrax pup, Edward, it's got the toilet roll in its mouth. The idea is that the paper's so lovely and soft that... It's like wiping your bottom with a puppy. <laughs> so, yes. Now, perhaps what they're saying is the paper's so bad you might as well feed it to the dog. <laughs> Except they've got an elephant in the new ads. Where does that fit in? Ah, I shouldn't think it would fit in. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, they're saying feed the paper to the dog. Yeah, and wipe your bottom with the elephant. <laughs> That's a truly surreal concept. That's the kind of thinking we need now. Come on, let's think of an advert for me. The first idea sesh is on. <laughs> <laughs> thought that cornflakes look a bit like people. <laughs> and after briefly dipping his toe in the waters of reason, the man with no brain happily retreats to frolic on Insanity Beach. <laughs> Pay for that, you bastard. <sighs> Here, God bless, look after Mum. Ah, ah, ah! Sunday's still available. What can I do for you, Squire? News? What news? You want someone for an ad? <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, yes, that's very interesting. Thank you so much. <sighs> Not work, then. No, no, my dad's dying. <laughs> <laughs> we really need some bloody cash. I know, and I need to get on telly. What I need is a bloody good advert. <laughs> now, listen, your dad's dying. That's Trey Boner News, daughter. Well, I must say, Filthy, I find you're out a trifle, cow. <laughs> it's a dog movie. We can make money out of these. No, uh, it's no good for the trot of my grand. They just don't buy bodies anymore. <laughs> come in, come in, come in. This, this is the plot. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> right, get your pants, sexy. They're in the office now. Hi, Tomo, baby, you old prostitute! <laughs> you look like a million dollars in used notes. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Just joshing. Uh, let's do business, you old bugger, you! What can I do for you? Aha! Uh -huh. It's more a question what he can do for you, you dirty old gusset face! Bloody <laughs> hell, Richie, I think I'm on it. <laughs> I'm your big new advertising initiative. Mr. Rich, overweight, drunk, and old has are hardly considered a major market force. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Nice guy, Tomo. I like your style, you hatchet faced old easy lay, you. <laughs> We're going to get on great. <laughs> hey, Richie, I think she fancies us both. Let's get frisky. Get out of my office or I'll have you spray. Ah, ha, ha. Touche. I love a chick with a sense of humor. Listen, my dad's dying. Yes. Mr. Rich, this is head office, not a retail outlet. <laughs> if you wish to purchase a wreath, Freddy here will be only too pleased to supply you with a list of shops. Miss Tompkins, this is my plan. My dad's dying, right? Tough for him, but life must go on. Now, I reckon <laughs> we can get a few celebs to the funeral, you know, probably up to Saint and Greavesy level. <laughs> then we'll make the Nash news, and then we're laughing. I'm sorry I don't follow. Oh, for God's sake, you stupid cow! <laughs> That's when they do the ad! A celeb wearing legit mourning, flogging flowers at his dad's funeral! It's colossal! 
How are you going to get the celebrities to the funeral? I mean, it isn't even you that's died. It's your old dad. Mm, 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 mm. Well, you're not going to get Tarby. Oh, <laughs> but my dear woman, some of these has-beens haven't been on TV in years. They're desperate men. <laughs> all we have to do is make sure there's a camera at the funeral. And that way, all the sad little minor celebs are bound to turn out trying to get on southeast at six, looking sad and concerned and available for work. <laughs> This, Mr. Rich. Please, call me sexy. <laughs> this, Mr. Sexy, is fantastic. I am prepared to offer you a three-year contract worth half a million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum TV exposure, posters the lot. From now on, you are the bloody Flora bloke. Fantastic! <laughs> Shall we shake or shag? <laughs> contract after the funeral. In the meantime, if any of your other relatives start to look peaky, let me know immediately. Oh, wonderful. Good day to you. Get the door, Sexy. Fantastic. <laughs> Yuppie! You old failed experiment in open brain surgery. Your plan worked brilliantly. I've just landed the biggest advertising contract in history. We're rich. Well, I'm rich. I'm more shoplifting. Limitless lager. Oh, it'll be too, too pleasant. I'll buy a theatre, write a play, buy a newspaper, write myself a good review. <laughs> My head removed and replaced with two pub optics. One scotch and one gin. That way I could sort of press myself against the ceiling and get a double straight down the neck without all that bother of having to raise your arm and swallow. <laughs> Blessed drive safely. Look after Bob Richie Rich here someday. It's still available. Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> My bloody dad's getting better. <laughs> well, it was nice to be rich for 30 sex. <laughs> they were. Sounds a bit rude. Sounds a bit like sex. Well, it sounds exactly like sex. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Filthy, I can't return to Paul. Well, you don't have to, do you? How do you mean? Well, you could always kill him. <laughs> <laughs> kill my own father to get on an advert. Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> well, because... Because... Well, there aren't really any reasons why not, are there? <laughs> no pics, no pics, please respect my life for some privacy. We'll have to do autographs later. I'm not complaining or anything. <laughs> a few moments ago, we had just decided to kill your father. And now, we have come down to a public house, where presumably, we are about to get completely whammoed. Again. I don't follow the logic. But Eddie, surely you don't expect me to kill him myself. Kill my own father, from whose loins I sprang. <laughs> Why, I am the fruit of his very seed. How can I murder my own flesh and blood, Eddie? Richie Rich. <sighs> I never knew you capable of such touching sentiments. No, 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 it's nothing to do with sentiment. I'm talking about the papers. What happens if the papers find out I've killed my father? <laughs> Might be a bit of a scandal. Well, I'm not saying we couldn't sit on it, but give a dog a bad name. Like Tiddles. That's right. <laughs> Somebody's bound to stick. That's why we've come down here. You see, we've got to get somebody else to kill him for us. <gasps> I'll get the drinks in, and you rustle up a couple of low-looking fellows with a murderous glint in their eye. You know the sort, likely-looking lads who'd as soon handle a blackjack as eat their dinner. Right. I'll have a bit of a rustle around then, OK? <laughs> Richie. <Good. laughs> Look, I don't wish to appear defeatist or anything, but after some considerable rustling, there appear to be no lone fellows to report. Eddie. This is an East End pub. There's bound to be. Haven't you read your dickens? No. We're in Bill Sykes' country now. <laughs> Thieves, murderers and prostitutes. Come on, I'll check out the landlord. Well, if he's a prostitute, he's going to starve to death. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my host. And a very good day to you too indeed, landlord. Uh, perhaps you'd be so goodly kind as to draw us a couple of fulsome, frothing tankards of your best ale and perhaps serve us a smidgen of the fine old English fare, which is so boldly promised on the attractive sign outside your door. Yeah, and besides all that, we'll have two pints of lager and a couple of pasties, please. Is he winding me up? <laughs> it's the oldest trick in the book. So when no one suspects my darker intent, I'm passing myself off as a harmless idiot. Well, I shouldn't put an undue strain on your acting ability. <laughs> 
I knew you were going to say something like that. I really, really knew you were going to say something like that. I really, 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 really knew you were going to say something like that. Just so long as you realise that I knew all the time that you were going to say something like that. Well, it was in the script, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much. What are you having, Richie? Uh, a small board of lemon, please. <laughs> now, my landlord, I'm a well-heeled top from up west, and I'm looking for a couple of low fellows who don't mind doing a bit of dirty work, so long as there's a sovereign in it for them. Well, you're not going to get much for a quid, mate. The old bloke in the corner might give you a kiss for that, I suppose. There'd be more if you wanted to put his teeth in. Not that sort of dirty work. As far as sexual gratification is concerned, I'm quite capable of doing that on my own, thank you very much. <laughs> two stout artisans of such degraded morals that they'll do bloody murder for the price of a belly full of mother's ruin. You mean you want someone to risk life imprisonment for a fiver? Well, hang on, no one said anything about a fiver. Blimey, I only want him killed, not staffed and manted. You seem to be under the impression that this is some kind of job centre for the criminal fraternity. Well, come on, mate. I know you working-class costermongers. Once you have drunk your meths and beaten your wives, there's nothing left to do except sex for dog, isn't there? You're always on for a dear mischief, aren't you? That's it. <laughs> All right, Frank. Morning, Rocky. <laughs> Take a look at those two. Pretty hard, aren't they? Oh, I wouldn't want to meet them in an alley on a dark night if they had a chainsaw and they were gouging my guts out with it, yeah, <laughs> splitting my head open with a blunt machete and spilling my brains out all over the pavement. Yes, Ned, if your brains were spilt all over the pavement, I hardly think the local council street cleansing department would be overtaxed to do. Uh, shut up. Restrain your imbecility whilst I ingratiate myself with these two gutter snaps. Two points of wallet, please, Frank. Uh, I'll get these, lads. Make them halves. <laughs> I want someone taken out. Permanently. You mean killed? You have a keen brain. What is this, a cabaret? What's the matter, kid? You're scared? <laughs> just plenty tough, thank you. But when the bottom line comes, you just can't hack it. Plenty of swagger and two parts of wallet, please, Frank. <laughs> when there's man's work to be done, it's off. Home to mummy. Yeah. Come on. I just bought you two lily-livered lettuce leaves a half a bittery to think I deserve something in return. Yeah. Blimey, I only want my dad killed. Maybe they're scared. What are you? Queer. <laughs> Maybe they're puffs. Just a couple of poncy old queens. Just two mincing old woofters. Whoops, watch your bums, lads. Backs to the wall. Get them a handbag. Put on your bike clips, Eddie, or they'll be up your trouser leg. Bloody fairies. That's what you are, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this is a gay pub. <laughs> Come back until you've liberated your sexual politics, or you'll get a murder, all right? How dare he? I'm completely liberated. I work in the theatre. Some of my best friends are trouser bandits. <laughs> what about my daughter, that's all. Yeah, but you haven't got a daughter, have you? What's more, you're very unlikely to have one, because the chances of any woman letting you within a billion miles of her action are completely non-existent. You're a cruel, spiteful little viper, aren't you, Eddie? Christian virtue is a foreign language. Kindness and good fellowship are closed books, aren't they? <sighs> Come on, let's go and kill my dad. <laughs> <coughs> it is imperative that we are brilliantly efficient. Right. On our past record, that seems a trifle unlikely. <laughs> Firstly, and above all, we must leave no fingerprints. Right. Did you bring the gloves? Yes, indeed. These are oven gloves. Yes. <laughs> you should be needing gloves because things might get a bit hot. Oh. Well, you should say what you bloody mean. Well, it was obvious what I meant. You can't expect me to circumnavigate every torturous twist of the bottomless pit you choose to call a brain. Do you forget? What do you call a coal mine that can't go to the toilet properly? Who knows? A bottomless pit. <laughs> Brilliant and great. That gang will be all over Britain next week. So's herpes, but I don't think nice people want to learn the television sets. <laughs> right. Which do you want? The little Mr. Men shaped ones? Or the foxy shaped ones? Uh, the fox shaped ones. No, 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 the Mr. Men. No, no, foxes. No, no. Oh, God, I don't know. One of each, one of each. Nice choice. Eddie, I think that you should wear a mask. Why? Do you think I'm going to get recognised? No, nope, I just don't like looking at your face. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, never mind that jibe, but it's a witty one, and that was brilliant. Oh, thanks, Eddie. Right, now we've got to buy the poison. Right. Shh, shh. Okay. Now, I cannot stress sufficiently the care and stealth of the essence here. They must give nothing away. Softly, softly, catchy monkey. Let's go. Good afternoon. I'd like some poison to kill my dad, please. Afternoon. I'd like some poison to kill my rat, please. I'm oh, sorry, sir. I've only got six packets, I'm afraid. Uh, well, how strong is it? Well, quite strong, yeah. Quite? I mean, well, I mean, look, if I wanted to kill one, say, very big rat, <laughs> how much would I need? How big a rat? Well, uh, uh, Eddie, how big would you say my dad was? Oh, about uh, six foot, about eleven stone. Yeah, he's a big man. Uh, uh, with with claws uh, and uh, and a long tail. Oh, yeah, and, and teeth. Teeth. Where's my teeth? Where's, Where's my, my teeth? teeth? Yeah, so six packets would kill an elephant. Four pound, please. <laughs> Do you hear that, Richie? He thinks we're trying to kill an elephant. We're <laughs> baffling him at every turn. <laughs> There you are, shopkeeper. Now then, my name's Angela Ribbon, I'm Dutch and I live in Antwerp. Come on, Eddie. I mean, you're your husband. Where? Where? Right, let's pop the poison at pot and poison pop! Yeah. People may say I'm cruel and heartless, but I honestly have no choice. Cash is involved. Richie, there's a letter for you. No, type of bad mail now, filthy. I'm poisoning my dad. I think you should read it, Richie. It's germane to the issue. Oh, give it here. <clears throat> You are a bastard. Look, could you stop talking about me and get on with the letter, please? <laughs> he is doing. It's from his mother. Ah, dear sweet silver-haired mummy. <laughs> you are a bastard. <laughs> Such a Joshua. <laughs> dear Richie, you're old enough to know now, but I never knew your father, who was just a one-off bang to me. <laughs> the man you call Dad is just my present sex slave, and I've told the papes for a fiver. <laughs> a few more home truths. We never liked you, and your name is not Richie, but... Gertrude. <laughs> I've enclosed next year's birthday cake, so I need never see you again. Love, Mum. P.S. Piss off. <laughs> well, that's it, then. We can't poison Pop, cos we don't know who he is. Better eat the cake! <laughs> you know what, Gertrude? I could get to like your mum. <laughs> The Wogan Show? Yes. I'd like to speak to somebody in charge, please. Oh, all right, then. Get me anybody. Oh, hello, Terry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ralph Filthy here. Theatrical agent. Who do I represent? Uh, <coughs> uh, sorry, cross line there. Now, listen. Listen, Terry, I'm a big fan. Yes, yes. Love the little looks to camera. Yeah, very sexy. <laughs> Very come hither. Yeah. Very come hither and screw me to the wall, you whirlwind of sauce, you. No, I mean it. No, Terry, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it, would I? Yeah, now, Terry, look, I've got this book and I was hoping to plug it on your show. Yeah, well, 
Well, it's more of a manual, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is quite dirty, but uh, it's not tacky. No. No way is it tacky. It's more of a sort of a social service, really. Yeah, going it alone, I did it my way. <laughs> yeah, it's a sort of a single person's guide to sex, really. <laughs> oh. Gloria Honeyford. <laughs> oh, stop sighing, Eddie. I'm not sighing. <sighs> Pardon me, but I think you are sighing. I'm not. I'm idly collecting phlegm at the back of my throat. <laughs> and when I've got enough, I'm going to gob at you. <laughs> Wouldn't blame you if you were sighing, actually. The hours are not exactly charging by at the moam. No work. Nothing to do. Wonder what Tom O'Connor's up to. <laughs> Impost to say, really. For man is such a sparkling, multifaceted genius, <laughs> but one simply cannot predict what amazing thing he'll get up to next. And it's an interesting thing about Tom O'Connor. Well, congratulations, Richie. <coughs> I had thought that today I had plumbed the very depths of tedium, a level of boredom beneath which I could not sink. But no, Richie Rich has started to burble on about Tom O'Connor. <laughs> What shall we do? Stare at the wall or chat about Tom O'Connor? Oh, well, I've got a bit of a weak heart condition. Staring at the wall will probably be too exciting. Probably safest <laughs> if we chat about Tom O'Connor. You don't fancy watching a couple of episodes of Name That Tune on the vid, then? <laughs> oh, no. Telly's broken. <laughs> Tom O'Connor's probably playing golf now. Him and a few of the guys. Probably only just realised that I'm not there. But I thought you were going to ask him, Bob Monkhouse. No, you said you'd do it, Tom. Oh, bother, that's the whole game ruined then. Bob Hope will chip in. Bother, 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 bother. Richie, Richie, please, I'm begging you. No, I'm not, I'm threatening you. <laughs> if you don't shut up, I shall ram your head into the microwave. All right, all right, all right. The subject is closed. <sighs> <sighs> See, Brucey Forsyth's got a new series. <laughs> Spot the catchphrase. Brucey trots out a series of meaningless catchphrases and the celeb panel have to guess which one's going to annoy the general public most. <laughs> could be very big, Eddie. Richard, do you think we could possibly avoid the subject of Brucey Forsyth as well? I mean, in terms of boredom, it's much the same as talking about Michael Barrymore, really, isn't it? <laughs> what? Eddie, your ignorance really is embarrassing. We're talking about two completely different artistic entities. I mean... They're catchphrases, for example. I mean, what's Bruce's catchphrase? Come on, what's Bruce Forsyth's catchphrase? You know, you know it. Come on, what is it? What is it, Eddie? What is it? It's gonna be a big night tonight <laughs> if you play your cards right. Nice to see you. Give, Give us, us a, a twirl, Anthea. I'm, I'm in charge. That's right. And Michael Barrymore's is anything John Cleese ever said. Accompanied by a couple of rounds of... Oh, 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 oh. Where's the similarity there? Neither of them are funny. I mean, take the game shows they present. On Play Your Cards Right with Brucey, there's a whole line of cards and then you win a prize. Whereas on Strike It Lucky with Michael, there's a whole line of televisions and then you win a prize. I mean, there's just no similarity between the two concepts at all. Really, Eddie, I do think that when important TV execs go to so much trouble to provide us with such varied scheduling, the least you can do is give them some credit. Richie, if you don't shut up, I'm going to cut your head off. Stuff it in the microwave, wait until it goes ping, then take it out, mash it up with a bit of milk and butter and ram it up your backside! So, <laughs> shut up! Very well. If you wish it, Eddie, we shall sit in silence. It could save your life. I 
here, Ted Rogers has been thrown off 3-2-1. Right. <laughs> Too old, see? <laughs> Too old. He's 180 feet a day. Got caught short in the ad break and had a whittle in Dusty Bin. <laughs> Dreadful business. Actually, the rumour in the business is that they want me to take it over. Yeah, me! With Sammy Fox as the glamorous bit of totty on the side. Yeah, could be a very special team, I think. <laughs> do you want to touch my body? Yes, we do, Sammy. And what's more, we want to stick our heads up your blouse and go... <laughs> 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 oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Right, Eddie, that's it. No, seriously, this is it. I'm sorry, Eddie, but when they do me on This Is Your Life and you're brought on as my lifelong companion, guess what? I'm not going to recognise you. Uh... <laughs> That's right. I'm just going to simply stare blankly and say, who the hell is he? Get him off my programme. He stinks. And all my great showbiz mates, like, like Marty Kane and Gary Wilmot, they'll all say so too. They'll say, who the hell's a fat, ugly bastard pretending to be Rich's mate? Get him out of the studio, quickly. Yeah, and you'll be so embarrassed, won't you? You'll be so embarrassed, you'll start to cry. You'll cry. And we'll all laugh. And then Eamon Andrews will start punching you. And all my great showbiz mates will join in. Clive Dunn, Roy Castle, Pallers will all punch you to death in front of millions of people just for being ugly and poor. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> hello, Richie. Hello, Eddie. Uh, the front door was closed, so I picked the lock. <laughs> uh, do you mind if I use your toilet, Richie? No, of course not, Philby. Go ahead. So, right. Come on in then, my dears. This way. This way, yeah. This way, Mr and Mrs Elton. Yeah, in there. As promised. One room, bijou, maisonette, running water, fully furnished. Tray boner. Ideal for young families' first home. 90 quid a week, cash down. Thank you. I'm sure you'll be very happy in your new home. <laughs> Filthy? Well, you said I could use the toilet, Richie. Be fair, I did ask. Yeah, I didn't say you could rent it out. <laughs> I've just moved into the estate agency biz. Trey Boner, Trey Mucho Mazula. Uh, filthy, what happens when we want to go? Well, it's in their rent agreement, Eddie. You have right of passage. <laughs> filthy, I am not easily embarrassed, as you know, but I think it's going to be jolly difficult to maintain the social niceties we in Britain are so proud of with a young family living in my toilet bowl. <laughs> Eddie, 90 quid. Anyway, they won't mind. This is the 80s. There's nowhere to live. People have to go where they can. Oh, by the way, watch out what you do with your rubbish. I've got a couple of students in your dustbin. <laughs> Not married, I'm afraid, but you can't expect morals from kids these days. Boys, boys, this is not a day for long faces and whining. This is a day of glad tidings, merriment, joy, happiness. <laughs> because, Richie, my dear, I have found you a job. Oh, my God! <laughs> Well, aren't you pleased to hear? No, I'm not. I remember the job he got me last time. Yeah, so do I. Trey Boner. Regular appearances, extended engagement. Filthy, you told me to sign on the duel. <laughs> took a 75% commission on me unemployment benefit. <laughs> yes, never mind all that, Richard, darling. That's all in the past, because I have found you a real showbiz job. Filthy, if this is some kind of joke... Then it'll be the first one on the show this week. Shut up, Eddie. <laughs> We've had some super laughs already and the show's only just begun. <laughs> now, Filthy, tell me and tell me true. Have you really, honestly, cross your heart and hope today got me a genuine, genuine showbiz job? Yes. <gasps> a big. Enorm. Enorm! <laughs> you, Mr Richard Rich. Yes! You old trooper, you. Yes! You old hellraiser, you. Yes! You, you mad drunken dog of the theatre. Ruff, ruff, ruff! <laughs> you are going to read the gossip columns on breakfast television tomorrow morning. Ah! <laughs> oh, my God, this is it! I'm going to meet Anne Diamond! Wincy Willis! Gordon Honeycomb! This is it! This is it! Michelangelo got the assisting chapel contracts. Russ Abbott had his madhouse. Bernard Matthews couldn't say beautiful properly. And now I'm going to read the gossip columns on breakfast TV. Just the one afternoon, B. It's only tomorrow morning. Ha! 
Wait till you see how brilliant I am at it. I'll be reading the weather before you can say frag blah. <laughs> One small prop. Bear in mind that you have to be at the studios tomorrow at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> Josh, uh, come on, Philby, this is serious. What time have I got to be at the studio? Tom? I'm telling you, boys, that's it. A.M. <laughs> Shut up, Eddie. This is serious. This is my big break. 4.30 in the morning. That's right. <clears throat> so you've got to have a quiet night in, get to bed early, and above all, get up on time to get to the studios on time. Otherwise, you'll become bywords in the business for unprofessional behaviour and never work again. Yeah, right, right. We've got to get an early night. Oh, uh... Sounds a bit ominous. It doesn't sound in the slightest bit ominous, Eddie. Now, you just remember to be there tomorrow, 4.30, sober. Sober. If you need me, I'll be down the off-licence until opening time and then down the pub until closing time and then after that at the club. <laughs> See you down the studios. <sighs> T-V-A-M. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Sober. Right, 4.30 in the morning. What time is it now? It's nearly opening time. Right. Only 11 hours to go. Oh. What's on the telly? <laughs> it's broken. <sighs> right, now, look, we've got to be really, really sensible, Eddie. Yes, and have a quiet evening in. And an early night. As above all, we've got to be up in time to get to the studio. <sighs> Why don't we go out for just one quiet little drinking? <laughs> no. Oh. Mm. <laughs> you know what would happen then, don't you? Lager frenzy. Lager frenzy. <laughs> but one thing you can't do after lager frenzy is get up at 4.30 in the morning. We can exercise restraint. Yes, and back in the real world, perhaps we couldn't. <laughs> I know what we'll do. No. No, not that. No, no, it got far too messy last no, time. No, no, we'll never do it again, I swear. <laughs> never. No, listen, this is great. I nicked myself a school kid on the bus yesterday. It's a great new game, but all the most up-to-the-minute train setters are playing at the moment. It's fantastic, and it's called Trivial Pursuits. Richie, Trivial Pursuits was fashionable about five years ago. Oh, you really are a sad creature, aren't you, Eddie? If you can't think of something first, you've just got to run it down. Come on, let's play it. You have to shake the start. Here goes. <clears throat> Five. Ooh. Six. Uh, no, no, that's on an angle, isn't it, you see? It's on a little angle, Eddie. You have to roll it again. Six. <laughs> You've played this before, haven't you? <laughs> still, it doesn't matter who starts, I'm still going to thrash you. Right, come on. Right, politics. <clears throat> Richie, why don't we go out for just one little non-alcoholic drinking? Like what? Vodka. <laughs> Eddie, vodka frenzy is even more destructive than lager frenzy. I don't know, the bombs are a lot clearer. It's easier to wash out of your sheets. Well, it shouldn't make all that much difference to you anyway. You haven't washed your sheets since 1978. <laughs> and then you only popped them in the lab with a bar of soap and flashed it a couple of times. <laughs> now, come on, are we going to play this game or not? Right. Well, ask me that question then. <clears throat> Stop looking. I'm not looking. Yes, you are looking. I'm not. You're looking in that lampshade and then you're seeing it reflected off my eyeballs because they're so sparkling. <laughs> Sounds like a cue for a gag about sparkling balls. <laughs> not if you ever want to work again. <laughs> right, now, come on, let's play and stop cheating. I'm not cheating. I don't need to cheat to beat you. Oh. Well, in that case, perhaps you wouldn't mind turning your back while I read the question. <sighs> All right, then. Great. <laughs> you seem to be taking an awfully long time to read me my question, Richie. Uh, yeah, there's just one or two long, complicated words, Eddie. I'll be with you in a tick. Oh, dear. How oh, very, very sad. Richie, what have we got above our mantelpiece? Eamon Andrews. A mirror. And what do I see reflected in that mirror? Either sharp or brilliant. The pathetic sight of the man who once did the continuity links on TVS reduced to grubby cheating to get the better of his half-drunk mind. And this, if you don't mind my saying so, is Thatcher's Britain. Al Pacino. <laughs> and the Bee Gees. <laughs> oh, uh, great, good. Uh, I think all your cards are in order now, Eddie. I think we can start. <laughs> it's of no importance, Richie. I shall simply take the questions from the other end of the box. Now, presuming I can see nothing of interest in your sparkling balls, who, uh, perhaps you would like to read me my question. Right, here goes. The first question of the game. Da-da-da-da! 
Here it goes. <clears throat> oh, God, this is easy. <laughs> Blimey, this is a bit too easy, actually. No, really, I don't think it's fair. This is so easy. Look, just ask me the question. All right, then. But it's not really fair. I mean, really, really, it's too easy. I mean, it really is too easy, really, isn't it? I mean, it's not fair, really. I mean, you've had all the easy questions and I've had all the really hard questions. I could have won by now if I'd had your questions. I don't think it's fair at all. Really, I mean, honestly, it's just not fair. I mean, and anyway, you probably know all the answers by now because you play the game so often. For those of you who have never played Trivial Pursuit, <coughs> the producer wishes me to assure you that this is exactly what it's like and it's actually a brilliantly well-observed gag. Eddie, shut up. Our audience are very suffice. They all play Triv. Richie, <laughs> in order to play Triv, you have to be able to read, which I'm afraid counts all that out from the start. Eddie. <laughs> Oh, look, are we going to play this game or not? Well, ask me the bloody question! All right, all right! <clears throat> oh, God, it's so easy. Oh, God. Here it is. <clears throat> Who was the last Labour Prime Minister of Britain? And if you don't get this, you're an idiot. Callaghan. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, can you be a bit more specific? <laughs> James Callaghan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, <clears throat> can you give me a little bit more? Richie, there is no more. That <laughs> is the answer. Yes, but we have to go by what it says on the card, don't we? <sighs> All right, I'll give up then. Great, my go. <laughs> James Callahan. It says on the card, James Callahan. Yes, it says James Callahan, full stop, doesn't it? <laughs> Callahan, full stop. You see, you have to go by what it says on the card, Eddie. I can't help it. It's just in the rules. It's not my fault if you're too stupid to get the answer right. <laughs> Oh, no, great. Show me is a pink category question. Ah, it's my go! <laughs> <laughs> Who was the star and director of the Rocky and Rambo films? <laughs> oh, now I know this. Now I know this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, no, don't tell me. I'm not going to. Oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and don't say, oh, uh, um... What was the question again? <laughs> Who was the star and director of the Rocky and Rambo films? Got it. Tarby. <laughs> it is. It is. The card must be wrong. It's definitely Tarby. It's not. It's Sylvester. Stella! Of course he did. Oh, I knew that one. No, I didn't know that. No, well, you didn't say it. Yeah, but I knew it all the time. Yeah, I mean, well, I knew it. Fair enough. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it's my gun. No, but I knew it, didn't I tell you? I knew it all the time. I knew that one. It's still my gun. Richard, <laughs> in about 15 seconds, I'm going to have to punch you in the face. <laughs> and because I'm your minder, I'm going to have to defend you and beat myself up. And that way we're both going to get hurt. Why don't we avoid all this unpleasantness and just go for one teeny weeny only have one eat drinky? Eddie, we're having a lovely quiet night in playing a fantastic game of Triv. <laughs> We've got to be up in time to go to the studios. We can't go for a drink. <sighs> all right, Eddie, I'll let you have your go. <sighs> go on, go on, have it. <laughs> I'll ask you a question and I hope I give you a really hard one. And don't say you're there. Who uh, <clears throat> Geography. Right. Oh, God, this is so easy! Right, right. What, then, what is the world's northernmost capital city? Reykjavik, comma, Iceland, full stop. <laughs> well, I suppose I'll have to give it you, then. Why? Because it's right? Don't gloat, Eddie. It's most unbecoming. Oh, God, this is so boring. Ah, I thought you were going to lose, didn't you? Got scared, so you had to throw the board across the room. Go on, ask me a question. Go on, any question. Just ask me. It'll be great. I'll give it right. Go on, I'll bet you a million pounds. Go on, just ask me a question. Go on. Anyway, go on. Just ask me a question. It'll be great. Go on, ask me, ask me, ask me, ask me. Which jolly gap tooth scouser comedian who now presents Winner Takes All first rose to fame on Sunday night at the London Palladium? He enjoys the odd round of golf, and his initials are JT. <laughs> now I know this. <laughs> JT? Um, um, 
I know it, I do know it, I know it, I know it. Um... Got it. Jimmy Tarback. What? <laughs> oh, yes, Wolf Tarby! Yes, it's Tarby, great, I got another one right. Ask me again, ask me again. Oh, this is pathetic, Richie. You've just landed a contract at TVAM. We should be out celebrating. You're not getting bored to death. Eddie, we've got to be up early so we're bright and fresh for the studio at TVAM. Richie, if we went out for one little drinky, it might help us sleep. Just one. <laughs> well, I did win the game, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. Very good. Damn bravo. <laughs> All right, then. Just one little drink. Uh-oh. Lana Frenzy! Eddie, look! Paparazzi scum! Dilly voodoo parasites! Voting me! Voting me on my quiet night out when I deserve my privacy like any other human being! Leave my boy Richie alone! Give me that camera! Ha, 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 ha. Hit him, Eddie! Hit him! You are Sean Penn! What did you hit him for? Because I don't hit girls. You sexist All right, then. Games are laughing, they're rigid. Let's get drunk. Hey, 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 you two are going to have to go before I call the police. I don't tolerate this kind of behaviour in my club, except from celebrities. <laughs> 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 my boy Richie is reading the gossip column on Breakfast TV tomorrow morning. Is this true? But of course, small minion, I am, of course, Richie Rich. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want a bench, get us some pop. Hey, everybody, it's Richie Rich. Who? <laughs> Look at those two over there, eh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Eddie, those are potted plants. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to be really sloshed to fancy them. Right, let's get really sloshed then. Here we are, boys. <laughs> Thank you, landlady. Here's five pence. Oh, Richard. Oh. Hey, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I must prefer this club and it's on the way home, really. So we'll just have one little drinking here. And then we'll go straight home to bed. Right. I must say, of all the clubs we've been to tonight, this is the best. And it's still really on the way home, if you think about it. Yeah, but you have to think pretty stupidly, Eddie. I mean, we are in Liverpool now. Right. <laughs> Let's think stupidly about it, then. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, there's an element missing to this evening, which no true man should be without. I don't follow you, Eddie. I would not advise anyone to follow me since my bottom resembles nothing more or less than a wind tunnel at the moment. <laughs> What's this element that no true man should be without? Well, we've had a few drinks. We're out for a good time. What's your mind turning to? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, loosen my trousers, would you, old girl? Well, why can't you do it? Cos you're the nearest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Uh, just stand by my tummy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you have to do it, anyway, cos I said that you had to do it. And you have to do what I say, don't you? Because you're the pathetic nobody and I'm the great fantastic person. That's what your life's all about, isn't it, you zero? Richard, have I ever told you the story about the tortoise and the hare? <coughs> Is it a dirty one? Uh, no, that's a story about the tortoise and the donkey. <laughs> ah. Tell me that one, then. <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> There was once this really kinky tortoise. <laughs> I'm seriously into m and s <laughs> m and s Marks and Spencers. <laughs> <laughs> he used to work in the lingerie department. <laughs> and anyway, his supervisor, the donk. <laughs> donk. Donkey. Oh, yeah, right. Used to think he was a really conscientious worker. But really, the tort was coming in early to try on all the bras and try on all the mitts. <laughs> I think I'd better tell a story about the tortoise and the hare. Well, you mean you haven't got a punchline? Yeah, that too. Anyway, who cares? We've got the cash, haven't we? Yeah, we got the cash. Yeah, right. Well, there was once this tortoise and this hare, and the tortoise was really slow and slothful and called... Richie Rich. Have you got it so far? 
look to the moat in thine own eye, uh, is my answer to this. <laughs> or rather, look to the four billion fags, eight gallons of lager, and a couple of crinkly old copies of Mayfair in mine own eye. Look, Richie, we're not talking about me, we're talking about you. And, of course, the hat. There was a real whiz-kid go-getter, wise-cracking gangster called Bobby Davro. <laughs> Me and Davs in a showbiz race. This is fantastic. <laughs> Go on. Well, the hair won totally because Davro's got a bit of talent and the tub got run over by a bus because you're a talentless scumbag and that's why you'll never have your own game show. <laughs> And that's the way you feel, is it? Yep. In which case, it seems rather strange to me that they've asked me to go on breakfast tea in the morning. That reminds me, what time is it? It's 4.15. Right. What time have we got to be there? Uh, 4.30. Right. Where are we? Southampton. <laughs> right, we better be quick, man. We've just got time for one more drink. Right. A double? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Mr. Filthy, there's only ten minutes left. I really am becoming very worried. Yes, I know, Anne, my love. I am trying to trace them. I am considering every possibility. Hello, Battersea Dogs Home? <laughs> yeah. Did you pick up a couple of large dogs last night? One wearing a Ponzi suit and the other with a copy of Health and Efficiency in his back pocket? <laughs> no? Right, we'll sod you then. Look, we're running out of time. The pink goddess has had a heart attack. She's been very on stretching for so long. Look, daughter, I'll try and put this as politely as I can. Shut your face, you silly old cow. You should have to save money on has-beens. Hello, yes, senior service club. Yes, I can hold. <laughs> Hello, yes, do me a favour, would you? Look out the window and see if there's a couple of revolting offences to humanity wiggling their backsides and saying, we'll do anything for half of lager. <laughs> there isn't? Right, we'll sod you then. Right, well, that's it, and my dear. I have tried every conceivable possibility. However, as I said, I do happen to have this manual, which I was hoping I could give a plug on your show instead. Look, Mr Filthy, I've told you before, TVAM is a family programme and we do not broadcast smut. Good morning, Britain! <laughs> Richard, Eddie, Cat, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Honestly, the one time in my life I want you to let me down and you don't. Really, I lose all my faith in human nature. I really do. Honestly. Well, Felty, you're stressed. You're stressed. We have to be here on time. Which I thought was the one way of guaranteeing you wouldn't be. <laughs> Filthy, I don't know what you're talking about and I'm too drunk to care. This is where I begin my success story. From this small beginning, I show this empire will be built. Come on, Emmy. Oh, Mr. Filthy, I hope you're proud of yourself. Your plan to bring smut to TVAM has failed. We remain a good, clean family program. You really are as sweet and innocent as you look on the telly, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm lovely. <laughs> good morning, if you've just joined us. Time for a look at this morning's newspapers now. And here's our guest reviewer, Mr. Richard Rich. <laughs> In the newspapers. And let's start with John Fake in the Daily Bastard, shall we? Always do <laughs> This looks good. Embarrassing incident with bare bottom in local eatery. <clears throat> Pathetic and forgotten has been Richie Rich showed just how low he. <laughs> I thought his helmet was the toilet, claimed the has been as a policeman, but. Mr. Richard Rich. Oh, God, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> Eddie! Eddie! What? This, this copper wants a statement. Ah, right. Old coppers are bastards. <laughs> Just tell me what you did earlier this evening, Peter. 
Well, it had something to do with our trousers. Exactly what you did. For heaven's sake, we're still alive. We're on air. Don't worry, Anne. We'll just sort this out. You're amongst professionals now. <laughs> what exactly did we do last night? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Shall we show it? Yeah, let's show the world. <laughs> Please give order. All right, matey boy. I'll have a pint of lager and a small sweet sherry for blood face here. Great gather that. Yes, I rather think it was. God, I throw myself on the mercy of the court. I am only 14 years old. <laughs> give me your ward. Bring me up as your own, and in time we shall learn to love each other. I have been cruelly used, and I'm an emaciated way. That's right, Your Honor. A 14 stone emaciated <laughs> way. I've got heavy bones. Fat so. Spare me, Your Honor, I am with child. <laughs> well, with Eddie, it must much the same thing. It was him that made me do it. Silence, I say again. Silence in my courtroom. <laughs> Richard Rich and Edward Catflap, you stand accused of a sickening and degraded crime, a crime that strikes at the very heart of our society and mocks all that we hold decent and clean. You exposed your bottoms on a TV AM, and what is worse, in front of, um, Miss Anne Diamond. How do you plead? <laughs> we plead like this, Your Majesty. Please, please, please let us off. Oh, go on, I'll be your best friend. I'll be your slave for life. We meant no harm. We thought Anne would appreciate a bit of a peek at the old tradesman's entrance. <laughs> I don't say, believe me, sir, you do yourself no good service with this spineless groveling. Desist, I say, or it may be the worst for you. Blimey, he's milking it a bit, isn't he? <laughs> All he says in the script is shut your face, block pad. This is the last time we use anyone from Rada. That's for death. <laughs> Far from appreciating your foul display, Miss uh, Anne Diamond has stressed that two such raddled and acne-ridden old orifices have seldom been put before a sickened public and has requested the severity of the sentence mirror the ugliness of the flaps. In the absence of any defence, I therefore sentence you to be shot. Take them down. Oh, all right, then. I thought that's why we got into trouble in the first place. Well, you can make mind up for Your Honour, I wish to speak on behalf of the uh, defendants. <coughs> Oh, well, that's it then, isn't it? Goodbye, cruel world. Mr. Milton, I have passed sentence. The case is closed. You're on, you're on, Ubi, darling, sweetheart. Please don't shout. I have a delicate medical condition known as a hangover. <laughs> I contend that vital evidence was not put before the jury and that hence there should be a retrial. And this evidence is? Luby. The burden of the Crown's case to date has stood solely upon the alleged horrifying nature of my client's garden gates. <laughs> I contend that a split second of TVAM videotape is not sufficient evidence to so damningly brand a man's rear loader. And hence I further contend that it is my client's right that the jury should view the evidence. No, 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 no,
evidence. Want a look? No! 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 no, 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 no. Uh, excuse me, but we are still here, you know. I mean, never mind about hurting our feelings or anything. Seems I have no option but to <coughs> offer the defendants a conditional discharge. Oh. <laughs> and that condition is that you find gainful employment outside of show business, in which you are clearly a menace to clean living TV presenters like uh, Miss Anne Diamond. Case dismissed. <laughs> As for you, Mr. Fifty, I find you guilty of encouraging indecent exposure with intent to cause a public affray. And under the new criminal evidence anti-terrorist, the police can do what they bloody well like to do. <laughs> sentence you to be hung by the neck. Until you're dead. Oh. Well, you probably won't be coming down the pub then, Filthy. See ya. Yeah. Thanks, Filth. You're a mate. <laughs> <sighs> Poor old filthy. Gonna get hung just for getting us off. Yeah. Still, we're all right. So sod him. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, Eddie, are we all right? The judge says we've got to get gainful, non-showbiz employment. Otherwise, it's back in the jug for us. <laughs> <gasps> what about stealing? Of course, what a good idea! Yes, oh, it's very romantic, isn't it? Yes, oh, I can see me now. I am the unblemished soul, cast down amongst criminals, having to steal to stay alive, like Oliver Twist. <laughs> I should have been in Oliver, you know. I went to the audition. Do you know what they said? <coughs> Sod off, ugly. <laughs> That's amazing. Were you there? <laughs> anyway, Ollie Twisto didn't do so badly from his life of crime. No, thank you very much. No, sir, Bob, he certainly did not. After a brief spell of pickpocketing, a rich, kindly old gentleman discovered that he was the illegitimate child of his dead daughter and really a member of the middle class. So he saved him. Hey, Eddie, maybe the same thing will happen to us. Yeah, maybe. Well, the chances are sort of vaguely against him, really, aren't they? <laughs> no, 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 it's all in the book. Why, Doctor, Mr Brownlow will say in his gruff but kindly voice, know ye not these two little urchins, Eddie and Richie? Study on the portrait of my dead daughter. Surely you'll vouchsafe that their faces are just like Fanny's. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Now, Ollie started in the workhouse, so what we must do is throw ourselves on the mercy of the state. But Richie, the state has no mercy. They enjoy watching people starve to death. It's called monetarism. Oh, yes. Let's cut straight to the pickpocketing. Of course, yes. That's it. I've been entirely miscasting myself. The artful dodger. That's the part for me. Wandering around the town, whipping fine silk hankies out the pockets of fops and bows as they parade about the place. Right, let's practice. You try and get my wallet out of my back pocket without me noticing. All right, Skip. Shouldn't be too difficult. You got hit by a bus last week and you didn't notice, did you? <laughs> yeah, well, I had a lot on my mind. Well, you would do it with a bus on your head, wouldn't you? <laughs> Brilliant joke, Richie. Wasn't the bad one, was it? That was rather good. <laughs> Could we please just get on with the play? Who knows who's watching? Mrs. Thatcher's probably watching. Oh. <laughs> 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 Any of a damn thing won't budge. Well, of course not. It's nailed to my bottom. <laughs> too careful these days. There's a lot of pickpockets about. Oh, this is ridiculous. We'll never get gainful employment this way. And if we don't, the judge will send us back to prison. I know what I'll do. I'll phone Filthy. He's my agent. It's his responsibility to get us work. But he's in prison under sentence of death. <laughs> Selfish bastard! <laughs> Filthy! Great to see you. Commiserations and all that. Here's half a mile's part. Yes, yeah, so I did. I'm afraid, but not to worry. I gave you a bit of wipe down. Yeah, my dear, you should have seen what he wiped it with. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Filthy. God, I'm ill. Prison does not agree with me. This morning I coughed so hard I blew my kidney out the backside. For <laughs> God's sake, stop whinging yourself, this little toady. Me and Eddie are in deep trouble because of what you did. Just because you got us off, the judge said we've got to get some gainful employment. You want me to help you? We are my agent. I'm also under sentence of death. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, I'll help you if you do one small thing. Filthy anything. I want you to get me a short piece of one-inch steel piping. What for? Cold. 
If I told you that, I'd ruin the plot, wouldn't I, Eddie? Well, there's not a lot to ruin, is there? Really? I'd only call this meeting the stream of bots and knobgags a plot, would you? Eddie, it'll all come clear in the end. Just go and get the pipe in. Righty, dokey. <sighs> Here we go, filthy. Hey, here's a bit of a gag to lighten the tone. What's the similarity between this toilet bowl and your head? I neither know nor care. When you bang them together, they both go clunk. Eddie, if you can't get a laugh without cynical recourse to lavatory humour, you might just as well keep crying. Right, there you are, filthy. There's the pipe. Now it's your turn to do something for us. You've got to suggest a job. Right, well, daughters, I've been thinking. And it strikes me that, to date, your career can be summed up in two words. Oh, <laughs> star-spangled. Complete disaster. <laughs> so, the first thing we must ask ourselves is, what are your qualities and talents? Mm. <laughs> right, well, that's that out of the way. What should we do next? This is no time to mince with words, Eddie. We must be honest. Richie is a lying, cheating, vicious, right-wing bastard with the sexual sophistication of a mentally retarded donkey. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which means you are ideally suited to be... A journalist? <laughs> you mean, join the scum? Become a journal? Yes. What should we do for Uncle Filthy? Set fire to a hospital? <laughs> what you've got to do is go and see Dingo Wucker, the big Australian publisher. Mr Wucker, sir, the men who wrote with the letters of introduction are here as appointed, sir. Oh, Christ, yes, I remember. Say, what are their tits like? Uh, they're men, sir. <laughs> Dingo Wucker, billionaire and ordinary bloke. Good day. Uh, pretty rich, mega celeb, resting for tax purposes, an amazing bloke. Good day. Edward Catflap, extraordinary fart impressionist. Good day. 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 Well. You certainly come with excellent credential. Letter of introduction from Mrs. Thatcher and Jimmy Tarbuck. Fatto and Tarbo, bloody great mates. Yeah, forged, of course. <laughs> but then you want to be Juno, so there's nothing wrong with that. Oh. In fact, I was impressed by the audacity of it. Take a seat. Blimey, thought you would never ask. Take the weight off me plates. Put my butt on a spot. Save my bunions. Now you take it easy, boys. He said bunions has English for horrible feet. <laughs> They thought you said unions. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say unions, did you, you slimy little English commie? Maybe you did. Maybe you said unions after all. I Look, I said bunions, you fool! There, you I... said it again, you bastard! I'm gonna... Mr Wacker, we hate unions and you've saved England by destroying them. How clever you were to move your premises to Wapping so that under Thatcher's new union laws, you could sack everyone after many years' service. And when they gathered outside your gates to protest at their impending starvation, how lucky we taxpayers were to be able to pay for thousands of police to keep them away from your huge stash of cash which they don't for you in the first place. Get on with it, Richie. The bar closes in an hour. Does it? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Rich, I'm thrilled to see how much you support my anti-communist actions. You're hired. I'll get you an assignment straight away from the editor. He's in the copy room. I know where he is because I'll keep him on the end of this bit of street. That way I can be sure he has full editorial freedom from me, his publisher. <laughs> of yours about the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Couldn't you work a bird into it some way? Uh, ah, come on, uh, you can't look, you're a journo, for God's sake. Take some pride in your work. Uh, Who is this Chancellor for a start? Well, he, he's, a, he's a government minister, Mr Wacker. Ah, it's a he, huh? Ah. <laughs> That means he's knobbed somebody recently, right? <laughs> Find out who, offer her 200 quid and get her to do as a topless. If she won't, have a house rob, pinch her photo albums and find me a tits out sunbathing shot. Uh, I don't think Mrs Lawson's ever been tits out Sunday. <laughs> Who the hell's Mrs Lawson? How old's she? Well, no, 50, 55. Is she a lovable granny? I doubt it. How many more times do I have to tell people I'm not interested in women over 25 unless they're lovable grannies? Now, don't argue with me about this. I see our whole budget coverage as a six-tit story, maybe even seven. Seven tits? Yeah. <laughs> Profile shot, very tasteful. See the video. Now, I bought you these two new cub reporters. Yeah, dibby dibby dub dub dub. They're celebrity experts. That's us, Shazing! Yes, and you're in luck. You've got something big straight off. Tell them, Bill. Ah, uh, oh, Christ. We've had a call from the PM. She's worried about all these pop stars doing loads of charity work. Oh, well, I think it'd be a charity if they all shut up. Dreadful screeching. James Larson and Roger Whittaker are the only half decent rockers I know. Oh, I don't know. The Wombles can certainly kick ass. Yeah. <laughs> shut your beer suckers and listen. 
Bob Geldof and Midyear alerted people to the starving millions, right? Now, the PM is worried that somebody is going to click that the starvation is actually caused by the rich countries screwing everything they can get out of the third world. So, we are going to smear Sir Bob. Oh, sounds saucy. What are we going to smear him with? <laughs> Listen, Rago Brains, we're going to get this do-gooder. Now, this is what I want you to do. We're getting reports that Bob Geldof... No, no, he... <coughs> Midyear. What? We're getting reports that Mid's you. Look, look here. What are you, what are you talking about, Eddie? They couldn't get Bob Geldof for the show. We had to settle for Mid's you. <laughs> Mid's you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me just get this straight. We have booked a man for my show called Mid's <laughs> well, he's all we can get for a bottle of woodpecker and a snog with a stage doormat. Look here, I'm a semi-professional actor. Oh, for God's sake, get on with it, you old ham. Doing this with us means you probably get a panto next year. Get on with it. Right, right, right. We're getting reports <laughs> that Midge Year is a Soviet agent and he's having an affair with Mrs Thatcher. Oh. I want the pics. I want the story. You see. Where did we get the info? Undercover investigation? Squealer in the Ultravox entourage? Don't be a moron. We made it up. Oh. That's why we know we can be sure of all the facts. <laughs> now, piss off. Right. And, hey, let's be careful out there. <laughs> right, Eddie, this is the plan. Mm -hmm. I'll keep him talking, you sneak inside, plant thatch in his bed, spread the Russian stuff around a bit, and get the pics. Right. While we're at it, why don't we go the whole way and bung in a goat or an underage chicken or something like that? Edward, would you please keep the diseased flushings of your leprous mind to yourself? We are British journos. Good Lord, I hope we have some moral code. Now shut up and let's get on with framing Midge. <laughs> I'll deal with the butler first. Hey, maybe it'll be a maid. Midge is, after all, a feminist, so he's bound to be an equal opportunities employer. Hey, maybe we'll be on for a bit of sex. Yeah. <laughs> bound to happen. Hello, my dear. Goodness, but you're attractive. Get out of here. All right, so it's mid you. Don't you behave like a bunch of mindless sycophants. My sacred pity artist has a couple of crappy records to a bunch of screaming knickerwetters, and you all behave like he's God. I put my guts out doing jokes, and I can't even get on blankety blank. Look, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, let's start again, shall we? I am a police officer. Here's my card. This is a library ticket. Is it? Oh, damn. <laughs> police. Right, there you are. Oh, yes, officer. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, Mr. Ewing, I have reason to believe that you've been holding all-night sex parties in Bat Bus Shelter down the road. Ridiculous. I hold my all-night sex parties at Geldof's place. Oh, dear. <laughs> What's it like? Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nevertheless, I must ask you to be accompany me down the road. Uh, you're making a big mistake here. No, as much as you did, Major Green, to do this in the first place. <laughs> it is now the next day. And tomorrow is a historic day for British justice. The first execution under the new Police Act. A government spokesman said that bringing back hanging was a return to traditional values. There are plans to continue the process with the restoration of beheading and eventual ritual slaughter of innocents by druids. <laughs> the condemned man, Ralph Filthy, a theatrical agent, spoke out from his cell. I should like to thank all my clients for their many letters and messages of support. <laughs> Unfortunately, there haven't been any. Also, if the landlord of Biggins Illegal Drinking Joint and Peepo Bar is tuned in, I left an unfinished drink in the snug the other day. Pop it over, be a looby. A moving final appeal from a man. <laughs> you know, I've missed old Filthy. Last December, with a meat cleaver. Missed him. <laughs> Point blank range with my mum's air pistol. Missed him. It just goes to show, if you want a job doing properly, it's best not to drink 16 pints of lager before. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> that bitch of boots. <sighs> she wouldn't give me the photos unless I paid her. I promised her a mention on my next programme, but she wouldn't budge. So I punched her and nicked him. Ha! <laughs> I must say, I'm enjoying the moral laxity that the company's being a journo. Yeah, what are the pics like? Any good? I don't know, I haven't looked yet. I hope they're really dirty. I could do with a bit of a look at something dirty. I really could. Well, you're welcome to a look at my duvet. But be careful, <laughs> it ain't the dog last week. Eddie, these photos are brilliant. Perfect sex pics of Mrs. Thatcher in mid year's bed. This is brilliant. We're on our way to our first front page. Let's go and show Bill the editor. He'll be so proud. Hang on. I've just had a thought. Well, maybe we should bake a cake. 30 years on from his mother's womb and Eddie Caplap's had his first thought. It's really rather a solemn moment, isn't it? Richie. What? I think there's something rather unpleasant on your trouser area. What? My head. 
think he'd pay for them. Eddie, are you suggesting that we blackmail the world's greatest rock star? No, I'm suggesting we blackmail Midge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello again, officer. Aha! We're not police officers, Midge, you poor dupe. We're journos! God, the scum. That's right, from the Daily Bastard! That's us, our cards. <laughs> Then, Mr. Uh, take a look at these and bear in mind that we've got the negatives. Yes, right here. Uh, no, we've got the negatives in a highly secret place. <laughs> Not very nice, are they? Let me paint a little picture for you, Mr. Midge. Imagine a record store where your new album, You Vox, has just come out. I shall play a mother, Eddie, my daughter, Cynthia. Action. Oh, Mummy, look at the lovely new album by Ultravox. Can I buy it? He's so handsome and talented, even though he sings like he's got a whippet down his trousers. <laughs> no, you may not buy it, Cynthia. Mitch uh, is a filthy pervy. I read it in the Daily Bastard. <laughs> not a very pretty picture, is it? <laughs> uh, not really, no. Of course, for 200,000 million pounds. Yes. <laughs> and the royalties from your fantastic single, Shut Up, Your Face. <laughs> What's the matter, you? Hi! God, I don't respect oh, Shut Up, Your Face. <laughs> fantastic. Hardy, half decent bit of work you ever did. Yeah, so if you give us all that, then these pics need never see the light of day. Well, that would be a shame. What? what? Well, you know the business, Rich. You're a pro. You know that things like this don't harm stars like you and I anymore. In fact, a bit of scandal's actually quite good for the career. And I've not had much publicity recently, so, uh, great. Go for it. Publish. <laughs> Edward? Yes, I think I understand. <clears throat> Got this, Mr. Midgeer. <laughs> <sighs> God, how embarrassing. Demoted on our first day. Look at us now. Reduced to covering a common hanging. What's more, it's only filthy. I wouldn't mind if it was somebody interesting. <laughs> The condemned man ate a hearty breakfast consisting of 40 fags and a bottle of scotch. <laughs> Unfortunately, we were unable to comply with his last request due to objections from the RSPCA. What they do, gooders? The prisoner <laughs> will mount the scaffold. Oh, uh. <laughs> It is a far, far better thing that I do now than what I have ever done before. Well, that can't be very hard for you then, can it? Since everything else you've done has been crap. <laughs> hey, filthy! Did you know that it's a scientific fact that when you get home... Yes, I did know that, Eddie, actually. Ironic, really. First one I've had in 15 years and I won't be here to enjoy it. Are <laughs> joking, filthy? Actually, we're both very, 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 very sad. Man, there's no sense in moping, is there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you're right, Eddie. I mean, after all, as I prepare to die, I have only one regret, which is... I wish I wasn't being executed. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Isn't it filthy? It is time. No, 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 no! Hang on, hang on, hang on! My flash hasn't warmed up yet! <laughs> See you in that great dressing room in the skies, Luby. Yeah, yeah bye! to warn children that hanging is extremely dangerous, <laughs> even though more than half of them want to bring it back. Right, that's it, you lot. Born the party's <laughs> over. Shut <laughs> off. There's plenty more where this one came from. Oh, God, Filthy, you're alive! Well, of course I am, Richie. I've got to be in the next series, haven't I? <laughs> that's when you can really force your wages up. But how? <laughs> I've got some bloody great lines this week, haven't I? You're alive and but how? Come on, get on with this. I want to get to a bit with lots of me in it. That bit of piping you gave me, Eddie. It's an old Newgate trick. You stuff it down your throat and stopped your windpipe collapsing. That's what I did. But how can you have, Filthy? The pipe is still in the prison cell. Is it? <laughs> oh, well, in that case, it must have been this safety harness that saved me then. <sighs> God, what a rotten day. <sighs> well... Let's go home and think about it then, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> I knew nothing good had come of joining the scum. Oh, yes. <laughs>
<laughs> it's easy to say something clever, isn't it? <laughs> Except it isn't really for you, is it? Because you're so thick. <laughs> Boys, shut up, shut up. I'm trying to think. Now, it strikes me that what we should do is take a leaf out of Midgey's book and do what he does. What? Wander about with designer stubble wiggling our bots like we just sat on a magic mix? Edward, you seem absolutely determined to ruin whatever chance we ever had of being bought a drink in the bar by him after the show. He's got pots of money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, 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 stop it, boys. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> All I'm saying is that if someone as experienced in the business as Midgey says that all publicity is good publicity, then what we should do is write about Richie. Of course! Get paid to promote my own career! And what are we going to write about your fascinating lifestyle? Drunk has been goes to the pub. <laughs> Fat failure cricks his neck, ogling girl's bottom. Well, it's better than you, isn't it? Lobotomized blubber mountain farts occasionally. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not me that's trying to be scandalous, is it? <laughs> well, lots of what I do is very fascinating indeed. I'm sure the gen pub will be very interested to read about my outrageous exploit. That's right, Richard, you tell him. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> what about my drug problem? <laughs> Which is? Well, we've run right out of aspirin. And I'm getting very fond of nightmares. Oh, uh, great. I can just see the headlines now. Richie Rich pinches a four-ounce cheeseburger. I spent all my cash on Night Nurse Well, there has been to anyone else prepared to listen, which was no one. Look, look, can you boys have forgotten so soon the first rule of journalism? Lie. <laughs> of course. You just make it up. It's got to be spicy and with it. Sex, drink, nightclubs. I've got it. Richie has some sex and a drink in a nightclub. No, no. What about Richie has sex with a knight whilst drunk in a club? Good, good. What about Richie gets put in the club by a drunk during the night? <laughs> Richie, don't be ridiculous. They're far too chintzy. Yes. What you need is innuendo. Uh, of course. And I am the king of innuendo. What about Richie grasps his whopper in a club? Ooh, uh, his drink, I mean, madam. Fabulous! <laughs> it's Guardian Journalist of the Year for you, my lad! <laughs> now, I'm beginning to have second thoughts about this whole all publicity being good luck. I mean, I've been in the business a long time. I can remember when Andrew Gardner blew off on News at 10. <laughs> Bong. Good evening, this is the news. <laughs> <laughs> Tense moment. The nation held its breath. So did Anna Ford, I'm told. <laughs> what a nice story, Filthy. Is it relevant? Of course it's real, Richie, darling. Couldn't be reller. Hmm. Now, <laughs> I tell you, it seems to me that as journos, you are in a unique position to destroy careers here. <laughs> and if you destroyed enough of them, there'd only be, be me left. <laughs> exactly. Filthy, are you suggesting that we systematically smear everyone in British show business until there's only Richie Rich left and then the BBC will have to give him a job? Well, why the hell not? I deserve a lucky break as much as anyone. <laughs> Finish. Well, as you know, boys, I rarely get excited, but right now I feel like I've been locked in an off-licence. <laughs> this must be the most comprehensive piece of libel in the history of journalism. Every single person in show business individually slandered with you totally exonerated, Richard. <laughs> there can't have been such a catalogue of lies, half-truths and self-congratulations since... since Ian McGregor's account of the miners struck. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're sure we've got everyone here? Yeah? Vera Lynn. Vera Lynn. Uh-huh. Adolf Hitler's lover, rumoured to be a man. Uh -huh. Strange Hill kids. Strange Hill kids. Yes, the love children of Jimmy Savile and Nana Mascuri. Outrageous! <laughs> Lofty from EastEnders. Well, you, you know, know why they, they call him Lofty? <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? We must have the whole of show business there. From the very bottom, Roland Rat. <laughs> to the very top, Benny Hill. The <laughs> Benny Hill. 
The Beeb's got Ronnie Barker, but ITV's got the governor, Benny, 150 years in the bed. <laughs> and still telling the same joke. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've seen the original seaside postcard he got it off. <gasps> A national treasure. <laughs> right, come on, we've got the dirt. Let's go and show Mr. Wacker. Dynamite. We're gonna blow every other paper off the street. So you are going to publish then? Publish? We certainly are. We're gonna publish nothing else. There's massive new legislation on the economy, on industrial relations and the NHS. But we're gonna forget all that because this is a newspaper and nothing gets in the way of showbiz gossip. Like that too! Tell you, after we printed this lot, I don't know who the TV companies are gonna use. Uh, 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 uh. Right, well, uh, we'll be on our way then, shall we, Mr Wacker? Yeah, 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 see you. Uh, hey, I suppose there is some uh, microscopic evidence for all these allegations. I mean, we only need the tiniest crumb, but we've got to have something. Yes, Mr Wacker, it's all completely and utterly true! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Wacker, I just want it noted down, but it was Edward Didgeridoo Catflap who said we have the proof. Right. <laughs> How do you spell tits? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Never worked so hard in all my life. Oh, get the telly on. Which channel? It doesn't matter which channel is on all of them. In a moment, which time? <laughs> Half an hour's sparkling entertainment from Richard Hill. That's followed at 7.30 by Top of the Riches. And at 8 o'clock, there's Life on Richie. A fascinating insight into the natural evolution of Richie Rich. Ooh! Rich <laughs> time. Hello, Mum. Hello, Dad. Hello to all the family. Hello, yes, British Airways. No, I cannot hold. 